hurry up. But if you want to do this, be my guest. But this ain't a job you want to rush. Does that do it? Signal's good. Arm the other detonators and pull back to me. Hello once again YouTube and welcome to another video with the SS Motion or the Domain as we're changing the name right now and today we're having a look at my custom Oni Alpha Halo 3 ODST Watchtower. Let's take a look. So Halo 3 ODST has always been my favorite Halo game and I created this bad boy a few years ago but today I'm making some modifications and I'm also adding all of my new police troopers. If you saw my latest haul I got a lot of them from a random storage bin in Burnley. There's no way, there is no way someone has this many police officers in a storage bin in Greater Manchester. There's no way. There's so many police. Shame they won't exist a few hours after Halo 2. So I'm gonna add them all and we're gonna have a good time. I tried to have a very symmetrical design to it. Everything sort of runs and mirrors down the middle. Then we've got one of these blockades at the back, two shotgun and assault rifle racks, tool storage here. I love this thing so much. I spent a long time on it, made sure that every detail is absolutely identical on all four sides. Even the detail like these movable searchlights and we've got the ODST drone uh, just doing some reconnaissance on the top of there. One of the modifications we're going to do today is build uh, some handrails here. It's one of the only things I never actually had the materials to build at the time, but I did some routing and I found some. We're going to add today two little computer units so they can activate and detonate the bridge. I'm going to break a little bit of the symmetry and add some grates here, like there's some sewage work underneath. Perfect. To make these handlebars, um, the actual piece I wanted is really difficult to find, but I found that some of the old um, armory bays came with these pieces here, which are kind of similar. So what I've done is I've got four of these, eight of these little pieces here. Then we just attach them on like so. We can just pop them on like this. I have dreamed about making this. As I was saying, bingo bango, I have really dreamed about finishing that uh, handrail for a long time actually. Coils round. We're also going to repair a few of these. I found some more in the attic. We just need to add that stood on there. I also have a hand on the battlefield. It was one that just was spare and I thought someone lost their hand during the battle, I don't know. Traffic cones, I'm gonna set them out. Sort of symmetrical. I have a little stairwell running up there for maintenance. A health pack attached onto one of these pieces here. And then pop it on here. There we are. Little health pack ready to go. Got a couple of weeds growing out each corner there. A couple more warning lights. I'll have some coming out of these loose wires here. Now we're gonna display this with some figures. To do this, I usually try and stay as accurate to the game as possible. Sometimes I'll have figures from different eras of Halo, but I don't really mind that. On my last video, I did get picked up on quite a few errors I made with the different figures. But what I usually like to do is I start with all of the UNSC figures, or at least the main ones. I position them, I kind of imagine what they're doing, and then I'll position the Covenant all around them in attack formation. So this is Halo 3 ODST. So we're gonna start with Alpha 9. We've got Dutch and Mickey, who are the two characters that are actually in this mission. But I thought I'd include most of Alpha 9, or at least the main ODSTs. For anyone who's a serious diorama builder, it is the most fiddly thing in the world. Okay, so we've got Dutch up there. He's activating the bridge or blowing the bridge. And then we've got Mickey, Romeo up in the sniper tower. We'll have Buck on the ground leading the charge. And the rookie with his anniversary suppressed gold SMG. We do have the new Ghost from the prototype suit review. The other ODSTs we're using today are my favorite in my collection. These four are all from Andy Lager. They're all customs for Bloxfest 2016, all beautifully painted and make a wonderful collection. When you're creating a custom diorama like this, you really have to think about where the Covenant are going to go. I imagine there's gonna be some brute jumps flying here. So we're getting them all ready, all in very tight formation because this is gonna be a very busy diorama. Now it's dumpster diving time and we're going through 
pretty much my entire collection of Halo Mega Bloks. Mostly just one of every figure, but then also multiple of figures that I really like. So I've divided them into different figures. We have all of these new Mombasa police, all of these drones, a couple of the new mold grunts, a whole lot more ODSTs, a load of brutes. I also have this. It's a box I got in China and it's usually where I keep all of my favorite figures. Today we need the new Brutes, the ODSTs. You can see these in my latest America haul where I talk about all the figures I purchased while I was in America. I also wish I could include my new Halo 3 Elite but I guess it's part of this civil war by then. There are no Elites in the Covenant or at least they're on the way out. Next we need to give them weapons. These are where I store all of my different Halo Mega Bloks weapons. And usually I'll start by taking all of the colored ones and then after that I'll make do with what else I can find. Covenant weapons. I love the painted plasma rifle. That's one of the nicest. Mega Bloks has always been very generous with colored needlers. You also need to think about what the Covenant use in each game. And the drones usually use similar weapons to the elites. And the UNSC. This is going to be one of the most fiddly because I'm going to make sure that every single one of the Troopers has a backpack and I like to make sure they're all the exact same color. I know some collectors like to replace their entire arsenal if there's a new mold. I don't do that, but I certainly use the smaller SMGs versus the bigger ones. Usually Mega Bloks doesn't always give you colored weapons, but it is very easy to just get some silver paint from Warhammer or anything like that and just brush it across really quickly and you always get a nice painted effect. Because I seem to have a lot of painted assault rifles, I think I'm gonna make a main squad. Let's get positioning these weapons. that seemed like a lot of work but honestly when you're doing a diorama you're best to lay out everything in front of you so you can figure out exactly what you want and what you need and also all of this stuff is not going to be used but again it's good to know what you have separate everyone into squads so first of all I've got all of these new Mombasa police. They're identical police, but I've made a squad commander, so he'll lead the charge, and I've added some Call of Duty accessories there. All of the badass looking police, basically all the ones that have different um, faces or different armor variants, they've all got the police shields, they've all got shotguns. The main squad leader has all of these Call of Duty accessories and a target locator. Remaining new Mombasa police, I just gave these a mix of either SOCOM pistols or suppressed SMGs. We've got these two ODSTs here. I've given him the drone ordinance and a suppressed SMG, and this guy's got one of the cool Decol flamethrowers. Two grunts, we've got one of them as a suicide grunt with the two grenades. Brutes, most of them have got spike grenades, and then some have got an assortment of weapons. I've given the nicest looking gravity hammer to this brute captain. Then we've got all the drones with either needlers or plasma pistols some hunters, and then some accessories, and some active camo brutes. And that's it, we're gonna start organizing this onto the display. So close your eyes and imagine how this diorama will turn out. Imagine exactly what's happening. A lot of people make the mistake with the diorama of just placing the figure, and it doesn't have an intentional purpose. This is meant to be a screenshot from an actual battle. So he's reading off the drone, he's kind of staying in cover, and he's got his friend covering his back. Again, I'm positioning the UNSC first and imagining what they're doing, how they're engaging with the Covenant. We're gonna have the jump pack groups coming from either side. Now this guy has a target locator, so a couple of people again need to cover his back. They'll be forming a defensive perimeter with these shields to try and keep the brutes away. But always there's one that breaks through, so I know this guy's like far. But also there's one that broke through. This guy is being attacked right now. He'll obviously react to his friend. And then this one, again, is one of the squad leaders. So he's gonna be looking to try and reinforce his friends around the back. Now we're gonna sort of just roughly display all of these guys with the assault rifles. You can sort of get all of your figures in a running position or like some kind of movement. If you want to display one that has died, make sure to include its weapon. These two are focusing fire. I'm gonna have it on the main chieftain. He's about to lay down. Maybe he's already taken that guy out. Time for the jump pack brutes. Anytime I'm attaching one to a pole, I'll have his legs sort of flying in the air. A little more lifelike. They're attacking down here. The police are really trying their best to shield off the attackers. But this one got through. The more figures you add, the worse it gets on just like the fiddliness of trying to keep everything. If you want to attach something like this, but you don't want it to be obvious, use something like a pipe. This could just be a natural piece coming out of a sewage. Attach it here. This guy here is being crunched by the brute's gravity hammer, but he's just trying to reach out to his friend. 
who is a little too late. Tack is your best friend. Sometimes the posability of these old figures isn't amazing, but if you get a bit of tack on the top of a head, you can just position it so it's looking straight down at the floor. I've added most of the brutes now, and we've got the grunts coming in as well. And because of size constraints, we're only gonna have one hunter, and it should be appropriate that it's the gold one. He's gonna be breaking through. I've actually moved some around here. So you've got to think about what is drawing each character's attention the most. So now I've, I've changed the rookie. He's charging straight for the hunter with a knife. A couple of them have also changed their face of view, what they're actually paying attention to. But then a lot have got their own problems and will stay focused on their own small battles internally. I've got this guy climbing the ladder and I've given him the radio. So he's sort of warning everybody ahead. I've added a little more now. It's almost complete. We've got all of these police officers in the background. They're looking up at the sky towards the drones. This jump pack brute here, he's throwing a trip mine. At the end of the day, if you've got some space, just get some weapons and just drop them in there, you know? And now we're going to add the drones. You can even just have two of these having a conversation with each other, planning their next attack. So we are taking this flashlight, attaching it to this one who's climbing up the stairs. We're going to get this drone to attach itself to the flashlight there. If we attach him here, we can have the drone stealing him away. And same as before, we've got a sniper rifle that's attached into this guy's back and the drone's holding it. It's just a very easy way for them to connect. And he's just gonna be reaching out for his friend. We just can't reach him in time. Oh no. Here's a random little piece of pipe. Look at that, woo. And I think that's done. I've done a whole lot of tweaks. This is the one of a kind, Halo 3 ODST Oni site, reimagining. And yeah, it's just fantastic. Let me know if you would like to see more of these customs in the future. I'm thinking of actually extending this to the full bridge, which would be pretty epic. And I've definitely got the materials to do it. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're all staying safe during COVID-19. Very scary times, but I hope at least kind of keep you company while you're all in lockdown with all these Halo videos. And the Halo Brute is signing off. Now that was all child's play. This is truly the terrifying moment. Whoa, whoa. Home safe and sound. Hello once again YouTube and welcome to part 2 of my Halo 3 ODST diorama. Now I just got such an overwhelmingly positive response from the first part, I thought I'd extend the tower to a full bridge, let's check it out. So the first part is the planning phase and we need to design this. So we're going to do some research by playing the mission and find out exactly what makes this bridge tick. So the beautiful thing about theater mode is we can just pause and play whatever we need. Essentially, this is the start of the bridge, and we're gonna have the tower, the gateway there, and then extend the bridge out. So I got a lot of base plates in the attic. I, I took a couple of down. So I've got a lot of base plates in the attic. I took a couple of down, right? I took a couple of down. All right, we got some bad news. I just went in the attic to find the warthog and the scorpion for the video. 
and I dropped the warthog out of the attic. So I'm gonna try and rebuild this, but hey, they are meant to be destroyed in the diorama, so that's good, I guess. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh no. Then the bridge is gonna extend all the way across here. I also found two hunters now, thanks to one of the comments on one of my videos saying I should have two. The next step is to make sure that this piece is directly in the middle of this base plate. Then we're just gonna secure them in with these temporary pegs. The scorpion is way too fat for this bridge, so we're gonna extend it out by quite a way. And I don't even know if the camera can tell that they're two different colors, a dark green and a dark gray. And these are gonna be the main supports for our bridge. So we go dark green, gray, dark green, gray. And then we're gonna repeat this pattern on both sides. Bingo bango! It's actually like a hugely satisfying color palette. Now we got something to work with. Elephants are always the best custom build material because they have these tasty green bricks. So it looks like these are quite thin lines here. So I'm gonna replace all of this with only one strip long blocks. I've moved these pieces to work in accordance with this design here. These represent the archway that's gonna go here and the rest of it has to be filled with these guys. So we'll start with the long ones and then we'll just orientate between long and short. Done. Now, same as before, we're gonna add these thinner ones to the top of the support. You need to make sure that they overlap so it holds together more tightly. So I'm gonna start this build with just a simple two piece on either side. And then when I put my first one on, it'll overlap and lock everything together tightly. And then same as before, we're going to go small, long, small, long. There's a few options here, because like technically a lot of this support structure is not green, but I just love that UNSC green color that I've decided to make it that way. But I could have like a different colored archway. Now what I'm doing right now is really simple. I've attached all of these really loosely in a line. And this is the exact length of my archway. So I'm just gonna use this as a reference while I'm looking at what pieces I can use. So we've decided on desert print for the top of the bridge. Here's our windows, like our transparent glass. And we're gonna clip these in one by one. We've got all of these pieces here. That's gonna clip in nicely there. And that will mimic the top of that. These pieces here will all run underneath this one. A jump forward in progress now. We've got these little searchlights at the front, but we drop in level using these pieces, and then this curves it off really nicely. These also round off the sides, and then we're starting to build a base structure now. It's coming together really well. It's gonna look very nice up there. The gateway needs more support, <laughs> like this. Every one of these, put a three-piece on, and attach them around the outside, and fasten it all together there. So it's a lot more secure and a little more streamlined in the process. Then filling this all in, pop these in here. Now we're making the final transition from desert to green. And we're gonna layer this nonstop. Okay. Now we've removed these outside pieces here. Get two long ones, slot them in. Some of these short ones, either side. Here is the bridge arch, the archway for the bridge. This will slot into place just like this. A couple of other additions I made to the bridge. I streamlined everything, little antenna here, underneath all of these really nice pieces that just attach so well. Firmly attaching all these pieces together. We've still got a lot to do. We've got to work on all of this. We've got to make the charges and some support beams, and then we've got to run the structure around here. Just currently putting together these four pieces. These are going to be the charges, or at least the towers that the charges are set on. And then these four to go alongside it. This one has to be one strip longer. Slot it in. As the bedroom slowly descends into chaos, I've collected the next few pieces we need. We've got these grated pieces and a cap on the top. Let's set the charges. Traffic light strips. There's no better way to visualize these kind of slanting pieces than these ones that literally go right down. Hello everyone and welcome to day two. Now I got really busy last night organizing everything, finding all the pieces I needed. So I'm gonna talk you through all of the additional details I've made right now. First of all, I've added a new block of silver that perfectly aligns with this bronze. I've got these little exhaust vents and I'm just putting some dark green underneath so you can barely notice it. Like they're coming out of the 
tower. I'm going to start with these silver ones. I've got four of these. I'm gonna put each of these next to the main suspension supports. These are the main design focus, so I'm gonna work out from here. I've got four of these ones, put them either sides. I'm going to use this piece, the longer pieces, every two block interval. I've got some sewage grates running towards the middle. Ah, look at that, that's really starting to take shape. Cap off the top of my towers. Now we're gonna make the charges so the ODSTs can blow the bridge. We've got two pieces today, the turbine, and this little piece from an alien set. I'm going to get some tack, pop it inside the turbine. Usually I'd be a little more careful with tack showing on the piece, but it is a charge, so I would imagine it involves some putty. I don't mind. And we're going to stick this onto the side of the bridge. Ready to blow. They actually, they look pretty cool. Happy with that. This is not an efficient way of doing this. I would not recommend it, but this is how I'm finding new pieces. The Mega Bloks Ferry keeps on giving. Now we've got a smooth section that literally runs the entire way across. Really nice design. We'll start by filling in these ones and use the smaller pieces, fill in those gaps. Now I'm just trying to smooth out everything. I'm trying to make sure that there's no bobbly, dippy pieces. It all sort of flows really nicely. And I'm gonna get these pieces here. Just fill in as many of the holes as possible. And it just fits in perfectly. Flash forward like a billion hours. The whole thing is streamlined now. Everything is smoothed out. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks pretty wonderful now. Let's actually see how good it looks. I've made sure that the Scorpion can fit coming out of the gate like this. I will add a few flames to them too. That is the majority of the bridge. I'm gonna do some more alterations and then I'm going to build up this side and then we'll see what it looks like. Day three and we are done. This is the one of a kind Halo 3 ODST Oni Alpha Site bridge build. I am so, so happy with how it turned out. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it and I'll see you tomorrow for when we display this with figures. It's gonna be pretty wild. The streets of New Mombasa lay dormant and quiet, while Alpha 9 prepared for an imminent attack from the Covenant, and while their chances were slim, they would defend only Alpha Site till their dying breath. Or I guess till they just blow it up. This is the Halo 3 ODST diorama. ODSTs have some backup. We're gonna use a lot of the figures from the last build, but I've also found a lot more to use. We're gonna have the brand new drop pod jackals and some brute honor guards, night patrol brutes, a lot more jump pack brutes, new mold brutes, half AC jackal, and the legendary full AC jackal. Always get the colored weapons above anything else. Really happy with this. Let's get it on the display. To UNSC and Covenant, because that's the two directions they're coming from.
we are ready to go now. We've got some extra reinforcements. This squad of blue marines. <laughs> blue? <laughs> This squad of marines is led by Sergeant Avery Johnson. And I've given him the Halo 5 shotgun, because why not? David Stockbridge Custom, this jump pack ODST. And then also the most treasured figure to me, Avery. He used to be the mascot of the channel, and now he's the mascot of the Discord. And yeah, he's gonna be leading the charge. I'm gonna start with the drop pod. Landed for reinforcements. And out of that drop pod, sniper support, Mickey and Dutch. They're blowing the bridge, so they're going to take center field right where the action is. And we're gonna have the rest of Alpha 9 covering his back. So we got Romeo in the sniper tower, Buck on the bridge, and then we'll have the rookie just right in the thick of it. We're gonna have more ODSTs coming to cover Buck, and then this stealth ODST. These two, same as before, will just be in their own little team. Ghost, he'll be working on his own too. You know what, maybe Ghost and the rookie will be side by side. I'm definitely gonna have some Covenant that have already broken through. And then I'll have these four custom and Lega ODSTs sort of defending their position here which this ODST can conveniently have dropped in to help them. Johnson must be leading a squad of Marines out of the building. So I'll put him by the main gate. We'll put one of the Marines on this turret and all of his Marines backing him up. We'll have all the riot shield boys. They're all defending the position of Mickey and Dutch. If they're defending it, one of them got knocked out. Jump pack ODST straight in the thick of it and Avery coming up to support his brothers too. I think I'll wait a little bit to display all the rest of the police officers, see where I'm at with the Covenant. All right, let's get some Covenant bad boys in here. Flying over the top. <laughs> Flying a little too far. And number three, shot in midair by the ODST. Leading the charge, we got a double pair of gold hunters and they're charging straight for the rookie. This brute honor guard surveying what's going on. And then this brute captain is gonna be coming straight over the warthog. Now I just can't go another video without using my favorite 10th anniversary elite. Now it's part of the elite covenant war right now. So he's just gonna be dead. He's just gonna be on the, but I have to have him there. He's gonna be leaning against that scorpion. These brute night watchers will have snuck through the back and they're about to assault the Marines. two white brutes, two grunts, balancing on the edge of a bridge there, very daring. Then we're gonna have this fella on top of the support structure again with just a bit of attack. Jackal sniper at the back, looking to ruin someone's day on legendary. So we'll put a load of them in this watchtower, have a couple of them aiming down at the street, and then we'll have this gray marine in the center of the watchtower, and he's radioing for backup. Wow, that was fiddly, but we got them all in. Now we're just gonna dot NMPD troopers wherever there's space. Now, this looks really good. We can just display loads around that drop pod over there. These guys are all running down from the second floor. Then you can always have one climbing the ladder. And then the last part is the drones. We have one hanging off there. The ODSTs can be fighting the two red drone squad leaders right up close and personal. And would you looky here, that is almost done. It wouldn't be quite the same diorama if there wasn't a poor soldier being whisked away by a drone. Supply crate, traffic cones, some more fusion coils, a couple more trip mines, and then some weapons. Just sprinkle them in. Well, there you go, everybody. This is the Halo 3 ODST only Alpha Sight bridge diorama build. It just looks so epic. Thank you so much for all the support with the first part, the second part, and I'm sure the support you'll be given for this part. And then it's up to you to choose what video comes next. I'll see you next time. Avery, my lord and savior, is signing off. Hello once again YouTube and welcome to another video with The Domain. Now I just want to take a moment to begin with by thanking you all so much for the support on my recent eBay listings. I put a load of my stuff on sale. You guys have really supported me. You know I'm out of work right now so it's a great way to support your favorite YouTuber 
and also get some cool Halo Mega Blocks. So I'll be listing more and more throughout the week. You can check back, link in the description for that eBay listing. And second of all, I know I've been very distracted recently with my wacky projects like my 12 hour live stream, and you guys have been very patient, but you have let me know that you wanna see the next diorama. I did a poll on YouTube three weeks ago asking what kind of diorama you would want. 750 people voted and 76% said they wanted a Reach versus Flood Longsword Defense. Now, I can't ignore those numbers, so I bring you today my brand new mock Halo Reach versus Flood Diorama build. So unlike my ODST diorama, I've done a lot of preparation and sort of mapped this out in my head. I've got all the base pieces here, and part one today is going to be displaying Noble Team with a Flood Hunter on all of this diorama. And then part two will be displaying it with every single other figure, because I got so many new ones I'm very excited about, especially the brand new Flame Marines. So this is going to be really cool, and we'll start... <laughs> <laughs> That's never happened. That's the first time a sneeze has interrupted this. And... We'll start off today by having a look in the big bucket. Okay, so we got a lot of really cool things in here. This is such an iconic beast of a set. I'm so happy I've got one, and I've got a couple more going on sale on my eBay in the next week. Some cool base plates, floodgates, such an awesome old set, including the car that comes with it from Halo 3. Flood drop pod, Halo Reach, Mac Cannon. Very similar to one Noble Six uses at the end of Halo Reach. The main control tower and launching bay. We also have this armory bay from one of the old infection sets. And we're pretty good to go. Let's display this. Box is here. We've got my base plates. We'll be using a lot of these desert ones for sure. We've also got these desert bricks so we can attach them together quite seamlessly. So this takes place in a parallel universe where instead of the Covenant finding Reach, the Flood did. Right, so the Flood are invading from this way. We'll have the Mac gun defending from incoming ships outside. This floodgate as the main entrance to the compound. I think I'm gonna work the grooves of this into my Mac cannon. It'd be nice if they connected naturally. And last, we'll have one of these from one of the original Battlescapes. Just pop it over there. And I've got this box of weird display pieces. I'm gonna get a green and a purple grass piece and then pop them together to make some interesting floral. Ooh, a couple more rocks and then some ammo crates. Okay, let's get Noble Team. Okay, now we got the figures. We're gonna start with Noble Team. I'm very excited about this. First of all, we've got the Emil, and I do have both the standard and the Halo Heroes. I'm gonna go for the Halo Heroes because of the paint applications, of course. Series 10 Cat, Jun, Only Operative Dare, and 10th Anniversary Noble Six. In this diorama, I'm going to have both Noble Sixes. This one's going to represent the first Noble Six that sacrifices himself during the Deliver Hope campaign, and then this is the second Noble Six that you play as during Halo Reach. Standard George and Standard Carter. We've also got Halo Heroes Catherine Elizabeth Halsey. She's going to be delivering Cortana to the Master Chief. We got a whole party here, I'm so excited. So the main focus of this diorama is going to be the Flood invading in a huge army. Some are going to have breached through and everybody's gonna be evacuating the Chief. So let's place Jun. He's just providing cover for the Master Chief to escape. Emil, Kat, Carter, George with Noble Six on the ground. Wait, why is only Operative Dare here? That's Halo 3 ODST, we don't have only Operative Dare. Okay, we got this Noble Six. He's gonna be doing something else over here. I can't believe I included only Operative Dare. That's ODST, not Reach. I mean, I guess she had to be somewhere during Reach. And there was a lot of classified Oni intel on Reach. So yeah, I'm gonna add it to canon. Dare was there on Reach, she escaped. Yeah, she escaped with the Master Chief. What? No, because they went to Installation 04. Okay, well she escaped somewhere else and eventually made it to New Mombasa. That's the storyline we're going for. I just want to include it. Fighting Noble Team are going to be two Flood Hunters, okay? And we're going to position them down here. Okay, Catherine Elizabeth Halsey is going to go in this communication tower. Cortana is going to be on the main terminal with Dr. Halsey. We've got our Halo Reach Marine getting ready for takeoff with John 117 right behind him. We've got Noble Team, we need to give them some weapons. 
Cat, dual magnums, Carter, DMR, Noble 6, nice painted grenade launcher. Here's George's machine gun. And then we got a Reach assault rifle. We'll also give that to Carter. Just the posability of this super articulation is just so wild. All of these flood hunters come with a nice little hold here so they can position a weapon. You can have them holding the side of the shotgun and swinging Emil through the air. Emil, not phased by this, he's not gonna let go of his shotgun and he's gonna go with a knife straight for this thing's throat. And helping him out, we've got George. Nice sturdy position with that heavy machine gun. Cat on the top there. Noble Six with a grenade launcher. Trying to take down the second one. Carter focusing fire as well. There we go. Noble team for Carter. A nice big muzzle flare firing down on those flood hunters. Hi, John. Hello, son. Little bit of tack in there. And we can have Noble Six's grenade launcher also firing. We'll get one last bit of tack on the end of George's machine gun. Okay, that's pretty epic. I'm gonna do a bit of repositioning, but this is the Noble Team versus Flood section of the diorama. And then we've got everything else to do. Part two is gonna be amazing. I'm also gonna switch out this Reach Marine because we don't have many. The Master Chief a little bit further back, he's gonna have a Halo Reach assault rifle. This pilot, is gonna be telling him to get on board. We gotta get out of here. And then the other pilot is ready to go. There we go. The kite from the last video. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it all ties together. It's, it's canon. Okay, that is part one done. Noble team versus flood hunters. This diorama is gonna get absolutely crazy. We have like a hundred different figures and flood spores to go on to this thing. So I'll see you guys for part two. It'll be coming out a couple of days after this one. Thank you so much for your support, especially on eBay. You guys are literally helping me fulfill my dreams and get back to Asia and continue making videos. I love my community. All right, this was another Halo video with The Domain and Kat is signing off. Hello once again YouTube and welcome to another video with The Domain. I'm sure you've all checked out part one where I built a flood diorama. I added Noble Team fighting two flood hunters and then the Master Chief shooting out to space and he's avoiding all these nasty flood spores. So today we're going to display like a billion flood. The only two figures that we've not displayed properly are Noble Six, but this is going to be the Deliver Hope Noble Six. Only Operative Dare because I guess she was on Reach before she went to New Mombasa, I don't know. We've got so many flood, I barely know where to begin, but we'll start with this ghost here, okay? This is the flood infected ghost. So this will have smashed through all the barricades and it'll be making it into the main compound. The main defense of the compound will be these flame marines. One, two, three. This has the old school flamethrower, but it's still the new articulation. But these three all have the brand new flamethrowers and the cool new backpacks. This is from the Marine Customizer Pack. Really nice set. And this one comes with the active flamethrower. It's gonna be a main line of defense of flame marines trying to destroy any flood that try and break through the main gate. They were holding the line, but then the ghost drove through so fast they had to quickly jump out of the way. This one, he's still holding the line. He's gonna be flaming some flood elites here. My see-through box, I found two flames. And we can attach that to this guy's hand, like the hand is literally on fire from the flame. I think I might decide what UNSC forces I have first. We got Dare and Noble 6, Black ODST here. Here's our Reach Marine and a Technician 
and also a medic. These three are like the infection invasion figures. Missile pod, always great. Hazard containment marines. Couple more marines and then the rest are all just flood. And we've also got an active camo carter. Now obviously it won't be Carter in this diorama, it'll just be some other active camo Spartan. My AC weapons box here, he'll be doing some kind of stealth op. And that is all of our UNSC figures. So, like I usually do with dioramas, I like to think about where the UNSC are and then position the enemy around them. We're gonna have someone firing the Mat Cannon, we'll have this little Marine here. Pop that open, we'll have Noble Six with his 10th anniversary assault rifle. It'll be like the last mission of Reach, he'll just be trying to survive while the Master Chief is getting to his outpost. Only Operative Dare needs to be getting ready to escape Reach so she can get to Halo 3 ODST on time. We'll stick with Halo Reach weapons, keep it Cannon, DMR, for the Scout, grenade launcher for the EVA, and we'll have this painted rocket launcher for the Hazard. These guys will all be defending the line, so let's have the Medic, he's kneeling down and treating the civilian. We'll have the ODST defending the Medic with dual-wield SMGs. He's gonna be stopping some flood getting up those stairs. We've actually got two mounted machine gun turrets. One there, one there. In the middle of that, We'll have a missile pod as well. Ah, there's my other flame. I thought I had another flame. He's still firing his flamethrower. He's not taking his hand off the trigger. He's so scared. Give them all matching radio backpacks. One, two, three. And then these two are basic grunts, but this is clearly the commander. So the commander will be on the missile pod and the grunts on the machine gun turret. Because this is the only Halo Reach Marine I actually have, we're gonna put him with Noble Six, just trying to survive. This flood pod has crashed and he's investigating it to make sure more reinforcements don't arrive. He'll have taken out this flood marine that was coming out of the pod. This marine here is gonna be overwhelmed by flood. These two marines are trying to hold on to each other for dear life while flood are carrying both of them away from different angles. <laughs> Ooh, a little evil. Okay, and these three have them holding the line here. Scout here, has up here. He's gonna be overwhelmed too. It may look like a lot of these guys are struggling right now and you're about to see why this is about to get overwhelmed by flood. And I mean overwhelmed. That's the UNSCs displayed, now we're gonna get onto the Flood. Now, the first one I'm gonna include is my favorite, the Halo 4 Flood form. For this guy, we got two simple pieces, a transparent rod, and then also, from this bucket, one of these. I prefer, I don't like the 90 degree angle, this angle is a bit better for what I want. And because it's got holes in it, we can pop the rod inside, like this, and into his back or into his leg is a little bit better. He's jumping in from above and he's about to give them a whole world of problems. Nice, next one. We've got one, two, three more Flood Hunters. Noble Six on his last stand. We'll have one breaking through this defense here. This guy's just being thrown to the side. Carrier pod. He's gonna be bumbling into the battle, hoping someone pops him. EVA is gonna have a hard decision because you do not want a grenade launch or one of those things. Coming out to the top of it will be a Flood Spore. We've got an active camo elite Flood. These ones are super rare. Sneaking through to assault that poor Marine. Then we've just got two Marines. These ones will have been recently infected. One of them is being shot at by the ODST's SMG. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty-ten, twenty-eleven, twenty-twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight 25, 26, 27, 28 more flood. And they've got to be decorated all over this battlefield. Nice, next one. 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 N
these orange ones. We'll be trying to take out Noble Six. We'll have a couple that he has already killed lying down, but they just keep on coming. These darker blue ones will have overwhelming this flame marine. We'll just have one screaming on top of this post, one being taken out by this DMR. A few purples here running towards the main fight. Some blue ones here. We'll have this one has already been killed, capturing the green marine, eating the marine as we speak. We got three more right now and then we'll start repositioning some of these and adding the spores. One running here, one here. Yeah, he's already been killed. That is a lot of flood elites. Now we'll get some spores on. I have one, two, three, four new articulation spores. So these will be in some focal points, the really important ones. We'll have one jumping up here. He's about to attack the commander on top of here in the middle of the noble team fight. Loads of these little guys. Let's get them off. crowded but if anybody plays any game with flood you know these spores just get everywhere bish bash bosh that is all of the flood spores goodness me i'll give it a couple of tweaks and then we'll conclude this epic diorama and just like that a couple of hours later we've done all the touch-ups we need this is absolutely perfect i could not be happier with this diorama and last request from zealot pilots or zealot pellets i don't know how you pronounce it that guy on youtube requested i included avery which really you can't have an ss motion domain diorama without him so i'm just gonna pop him here wow that is the complete halo reach flood mock diorama Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you just for your overwhelming support of almost everything I do at the minute. Your support of my eBay listings to help me financially is amazing. And just the view subscribers, they keep on going through the roof. Thank you for everything, and I'll see you next time. A little baby flood spore. Well, what could this little thing do? What, what damage could it? A single flood spore can destroy an entire species. <laughs> single flood spore is signing out. Initiating Warzone Simulation. Hold bases, take down bosses, and eliminate enemy Spartans to earn points. Prometheans have broken through our defenses and our bases in lockdown. Eliminate them to secure our home base. Let's support those Marines, Spartan. Hello once again, YouTube, and welcome back to The Domain. Now, all of my videos recently have been doing really, really well, and I cannot thank you enough for your support. But, it is evidently clear that the videos you enjoy the most are diorama videos. And I've been putting it off a long time, everybody's been non-stop asking me for one, and today I give you part one of three of my epic Forerunner diorama video. And I can't wait to get started. Today, we're starting nice and easy with a simple question. How do we make this Phaeton gunship a little bit higher over the battlefield? We're gonna have this mammoth and a load of other things. And the Phaeton gunship only comes with a very small display stand. So we need to bulk this up a bit, have it at least levitating like a foot off the air. So we're gonna tackle that today in part one of three. Luckily for me, I've got all the supplies I need in the world. This is my transparent, translucent box, and this has everything I would ever need to levitate a vehicle with. The first challenge is the bottom of the Phaeton has a little dot here, and that's really its main support structure on its belly. It would be nicer if you could layer bricks on top of it. If you display it like this, the front of the vehicle dips forward, 
and could snap. So we need a display here and here, pulling the whole thing together. The first piece we need is the smallest of all. This tiny stud here, if we insert this into the bottom of the Phaeton, we can insert one of these three pieces that come with most of the old blind bag AC figures. Pop that in there, and we've got the base support. We'll start by inserting two four-piece bricks into there. Now we'll think about for a minute how the bottom of this is gonna look. I'm going to use the Halo Megablocks Cauldron Clash as one of the main display pieces of this diorama. So that involves a lot of lava, so I'll have this as the very base piece. And then I want a really big support structure, so I'll use these long bricks and layer them on the bottom like this, so I can make sure that the Phaeton is balanced well. Now we're gonna think about exactly how tall this should be. I'm thinking maybe about this high off the floor. So we'll start by getting a load of these bricks and layering them. Some of these bricks from old random packs are printed with the code of the blind bag. So I always make sure that's facing inside so you don't see it. That's looking pretty good. It's also cool if you take maybe the halfway point and then you get one of these square bricks just sort of give it a little more support inside. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Push that in. I think I'm still gonna want a little more support on this base. I'll get two more of these bricks and put them either side like this. That looks pretty good. We'll take two pieces off here, pop them on the bottom, locking this in, making it a little more square. Now we got a lot more lava, so we're going to square this up even more. Along this bottom, we'll attach some of these pieces making it more square. Two along there. We'll pop this in here because we need to start getting a good idea of how we can support this front piece here. Two rods here. These are held together by one of these small connectors. This will easily insert into the top of here and this can insert into the bottom of one of these feeders. So it's at an angle. If my measurements are correct, this should slot in quite nicely. So yeah, that was, that's looking pretty good. Almost spot on. It meets this quite nicely. This is really nice because it naturally smooths out here. Pop that in there. The Phaeton is pretty well locked in place. Now we're going to add some alterations to the base. Let's pop this off for hopefully the last time. We want to now try and smooth it out as best as possible. And we also want to lock these pieces into place Ooh, that rain's coming down. And then these ones are a little nicer because they're quite rounded off, quite smooth. So we'll pop them ones in the back. Very flat lava pieces. So the lava is sort of flowing downhill towards the front of the Phaeton. Loads of these flat pieces. Then some red pieces where the lava is super hot. The final finishing touch, this piece here, and a little flame coming out of it. And that is my Promethean Phaeton gunship display stand. Very nice. This is going to be hurtling through the battlefield in my Promethean diorama. This is going to get absolutely wild. We're going to have UNSC forces storming the Didax crypt. I can't wait to show you part two and three. Thank you very much for tuning in today. And the Phaeton gunship is signing off. Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. Now, this is going to be a milestone video for our channel. On a rainy day in England, we're going to be achieving something monumental. We're going to be building the largest Forerunner diorama that I think I have ever seen. I am very excited about it. And you can check out part one where I built my Phaeton gunship custom display stand so it can be levitating across the battlefield. 
This diorama will be based on Halo 4, Halo 5. It's not going to be accurate to one specific game. Part 2 today, we will be building all of the structures, making the main diorama, and having a focal point battle between the Didact and Fireteam Majestic. And then part 3, we're going to decorate it with more Forerunners than you have ever seen. This is the Domain's Forerunner diorama. We're going to start off as epic as possible with the UNSC Mammoth, the second signature series build in Mega Bloks Halo, and also pretty dusty because it's been on my shelf for a long time. We're going to have the UNSC forces pushing towards the Forerunner forces, and the structure that they're going to be pushing towards is the Forerunner Cauldron Clash. This was always one of my favorite sets back in the day. Looks absolutely gorgeous and is equally dusty. Defending this is going to be the Didact and many of his forces and charging towards it will be the Master Chief with all of his. So we're going to have the Phaeton maybe just moving along here for now. We're going to layer a main base plate in the middle where all the action is happening. And then we've also got the UNSC Warthog and also the Mantis. Now, come to think of it, I might actually have the Warthog coming out of the back of the Mammoth. Riding onto the battlefield. Some base plates here. The rocky one in the corner there. And then lava will be flowing off this structure, so we've got these lava base plates here. A couple of rocky structures. We're going to give the Mantis a couple of display bases just to give him extra support. This guy can fall over quite easily. Then we've got a little Forerunner armory bay and a Forerunner structure here. UNSC forces can have already pushed past that. A couple more lava base plates near the Cauldron Clash. A UNSC mongoose, maybe that's riding up the staircase. And we've got two Forerunner weapons crates, a few UNSC weapon crates too. I super glued a Spartan laser into here so it's kind of just peeking out. And then a UNSC ordnance pod. And then a little four and a sentinel just about here. That's the main basis of our diorama. It's already looking pretty epic. I'm very excited about this one. Now we're going to find the main focal point of this diorama. So it is my joy to unveil the Series 10 Halo Heroes Didact. This thing is absolutely gorgeous and he'll be one of the main focal points of today's diorama. He's going to be on the Cauldron Clash. He's protecting some ancient Forerunner secrets from the UNSC and Fireteam Majestic are going to try and take him out. This guy means business. So we're going to get one of the Halo 4 Marines. And these are really cool because their chest sort of flaps outwards like that. So we can place the chest inside the Didact's hand, like he's hurtling the Marine through the air. His attention, however, is going to be on Fireteam Majestic. They're going to be coming up this ramp. This poor Marine is not having a good day, and trying to back him up will be his brothers. Two Marines on this mongoose here. We'll have one driving, and we'll have the sergeant on the back. Magnum in one hand, mongoose in the other, the sergeant will be doing his best to save his buddy. But the main fight lies with Fireteam Majestic. We've got Spartan Thorn, Spartan DeMarco, Spartan Grant, and Spartan Madsen. Sadly, Halo Heroes Hoya has eluded me so far, but I'll be getting him soon. But we've got all four of these trying to take out the Didact. Spartan Grant is going straight for the Didact, focusing fire. Spartan DeMarco, battle rifle in hand, and Spartan Madsen, will be coming up for sniper support around the back. Spartan Thorn with a foreigner weapon I guess he grabbed from one of the Prometheans. They're all going to be shooting up the Didact, so we've got some of these muzzle flares for their weapons. Pop that on the DMR there, one on the battle rifle as well. This is probably going to turn into my favorite diorama ever. I absolutely love Halo 4 and 5's Prometheans. I don't care what anybody says, they were a fantastic addition. Halo 4's campaign was probably my favorite. 343 have made some mistakes, but I don't think they made them with the Prometheans. So this is the end of part two of my Halo Mega Bloks 4 and a diorama. This thing is gonna get out of control in part three, but we're going to display it with more forerunners than your minds could possibly comprehend. 
even all of these knights is just ridiculous. This was another Halo Mega Bloks diorama with the domain. Please check out part one where I show you how to build one of these display bases for your Phaeton and make sure to check out part three. I think it might be my most successful video. I'm very excited to show you guys. But for now, Spartan Grant is signing off. After a hundred thousand years of slumber, the Didact emerged from his crypt, intent on destroying the human race. And while the annihilation of mankind seemed like an easy task, the UNSC Infinity would not go down without a fight. This is my Halo Forerunner diorama. Time was your ally, human. But now it has abandoned you. The Forerunners have returned. Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. Today we are doing something truly magnificent, creating our floor and a diorama. This is part three, you can check part one where we create the display base for this Phaeton gunship and part two where we make the Didact versus Fireteam Majestic diorama. But today is the big day, it's part three where we're displaying this with as many forerunners as possible. I think probably the most that have ever been on a display like this, certainly on YouTube. Usually when I create a diorama, I start by doing the UNSC forces and then I display the enemies. But this time we have so many enemies and they're coming from the Didax crypt that we may as well display them first. We'll start with the crawlers and really we've got two different kinds of crawlers today blue and red. Now if you played Halo 4 you know that originally the crawlers are blue until the Didact takes them over and they become red. So we're going to divide these into blue and red and we're going to have all the red ones around the Didact and the blue further away like they're not quite under the Didact's control. Blue over there and we'll start with these two snipers. The crawler snipers are always a little bit further away so we'll have one on top of this rock here on top of the tower here. Cauldron Clash, just always such an awesome set. And then we're gonna have a large concentration around the Didact. Right now we've got Fireteam Majestic fighting the Didact. I immediately think we need to make a little more space here. So let's say that Fireteam Majestic are pushing towards the Didact. He's already taken out a few of the Marines. So we'll put the Marines weapons just scattered around and then we'll have two Marines. They've just been decimated by the Didact. The Didact's got the third one in his clutches and is charging towards Fireteam Majestic. Spartan Madsen, I think we'll retreat him away a little bit. Maybe we'll put him on top of the Mammoth, fighting off these Promethean Crawlers. Couple running down the ramp, DeMarco firing his battle rifle this way, one-handed. Couple of these Crawlers coming over the ledge here. And you know, once we add some UNSC forces, we'll maybe reposition these a little bit, but we're getting a good idea of exactly what we want on our diorama. And the further away they go, the Didact starts to lose control and they slowly become blue. Pretty epic so far, but we're only just getting started. The librarian left little to chance, didn't she? Turning my own guardians, my own world, against me. Some watchers decorate these all over the battlefield. A couple of these AC watchers too. And then we've also got 343 Guilty Spark. Times two. We can pop the red-eyed Guilty Spark close to the Didact one here. For these transparent ones, these little pieces here. On top of this armory bay back here, coming out of here. One more red one. We'll give the Sentinel a longer display piece and move them over there. Welcome everybody to day two. I've made some tweaks in the meantime. Only some minor ones. I've extended this lava and sort of locked it together here. I've added Madsen on top of the mammoth. Moved a few things around. We've got the mongoose splattering this crawler sniper and everything else is just really ready to go. We've got so many more foreigners to display on this. I'm very excited. I got a load more Prometheans here. We'll add some more of these crawlers, just dot them around 
but then we need to start thinking about the UNSC Infinity because there's just so many figures on this diorama, we're going to lose track of where we are. We'll have a couple of these crawlers jumping on top of the Mantis, trying to break it down. Let's look at some UNSC forces now. The main big dog, we got Captain Lasky. He's going to be commanding the charge. We've actually got two Laskys today. This guy as well, who came with the UNSC Mammoth, but this is just going to be more like a civilian in this diorama. Lasky is going to be the main guy in charge. And I think I'll have him across this deck here. Promethean Knight with a scatter shot. This is probably not going to end well for him. With the Knight's sword, it's going to be cutting through a marine. That's our first knight of many that are going on this diorama. John 117, the Master Chief, and the Arbiter. This is from the Halo 5 Guardians Special Edition pack. This one I've kitted out with some Call of Duty tack packs, just, just for fun, you know. Nice combat knife there. We're gonna kit these two out with a lot of weapons. The Master Chief, light rifle in his back, bolt shot, scatter shot in his hand. He's going to be taking out a lot of Forerunners here. The Arbiter, we've got an Energy Sword and a nice painted Needler. So we're going to have the Master Chief and the Arbiter back to back on the top of the Mammoth and they're going to be fighting off a load of Promethean Knights. This one will have been scatter shotted. Actually, we're going to move this one forward and we're going to take advantage of these two angled red pieces here so we can have him hurtled backwards. That's one. The Arbiter's looking this way to take out a translucent crawler and the Master Chief bolt shotting another Promethean that's coming towards them like this. We got this special piece here. This is connected all together and this is really cool because we can put one Watcher in there and we can suspend one Watcher at an angle like this. Flying around the side of the ship like that. What is it? More Brutes? Worse. That's looking pretty good. Now, the main Spartan reinforcements are here. Fireteam Venom. I don't know why, but I love the lime green Spartans. And we've got a whole lot of them for today's diorama, including the Fireteam leader, the Spartan Defender from the Series 1 Halo Heroes. I love this figure. He's got the really nice storm rifle, so he's going to be leading the charge for sure. Then we've got all of these different Spartans. Now, I got some very special weapons for these. A lot of them are nice printed weapons, all from Halo 5 Warzone. Oceanic, this beam rifle. He'll be taking sniper support up here too. This Promethean trying to take the Oceanic out, but this Spartan here, Gungnir, with the translucent shotgun covering his buddy. We've got this gorgeous battle rifle here and this beautiful DMR as well. Spartan soldier will have the DMR. He's running towards the battlefield as well. The battle rifle up here providing some support even though it doesn't have a scope on it. We've got Reaper Marami's dual wield energy swords here slicing through the field. This beautiful Master Chief green assault rifle sort of the Halo 5 Guardians look. They're all just pushing forward towards the didact. They'll be met with a lot of resistance which I'll add later. And then the scout obviously has to have the sniper rifle. He's going to be taking out that crawler there. These muzzle flares are awesome. Fire Team Venom! Who's going to be carrying the flag? You got to plant that flag in the Krypton, buddy! That's really good placeholders for Fire Team Venom. Let's add some enemies. Promethean forces incoming. A watcher here engaging with the assault rifle. This one being sworded. Sworded? We'll also give the scout a tactical backpack. We'll give a couple of weapons into the backs of these Spartans. Then we got one pulse grenade we gave to the soldier and two more pulse grenades with these Promethean soldiers. So we're gonna have the silver one as the commander, I guess. He's pushing through the battlefield here. This one's charging towards this Spartan with a scatter shot. He's about to get a bad surprise from this warthog that's gonna splatter straight into him. I guess this one will have taking out a marine here. The marine just shot against this crate. Two more Promethean watchers. Then we got a bunch more crawlers. That arm is looking good. Thank you. Okay, so I've devised all my marines into fire teams, all with very specific purposes. Let's get these on nice and fast. First of all, Lasky, who is now just a commanding officer, is leading all of these Halo 4 marines, and they're just assembling outside the battlefield. This is Commander Lasky. Helkin recon teams are down. Repeat, all birds are down. Next up, we've got Spartan Palmer, and she's leading some sort of covert up security marines. Seal her up! Looking good, looking good. Commander and his two officers, they're gonna be engaging with this Promethean soldier 
right in the heart of the battlefield. These four marines are led by the Red Sergeant. They're going to be pushing through with this mongoose straight in the middle as well. One of them will have been overwhelmed by one of the crawlers. This guy's leg's already a little damaged, so he'll have lost his leg. We got one more fire team venom jetpacking through the air. Four more marines. We've got two medics, and these two marines are trying to support them, push the medics through to the battlefield. Then I've got the call that these guys are injured. Maybe they're working their way around the side. We need one more base plate. Two little base plates attached by a little four long piece here. First medic is trying to support the fallen soldier. Second medic providing a little bit of fire support. If I'm going, you're going with me. We've got these marines. These are all old articulation and we're just gonna dot them around. They've already lost their lives to the battle. Rest in peace, no armed marine. This is looking pretty epic. I'm very happy with this so far. Let's add the rest of the knights. Seven more knights to go. First of all, this incineration cannon knight. He's about to be sworded by this Spartan here. We'll have one at the armory bay by the back. These small square base plates are perfect for balancing the knight while being a little bit subtle as well. So we'll have one more knight running towards Palmer there. One more knight over here. He's running straight for this soldier. The piece de resistance today, that 70s dude and his hobbies, explosion that we used in the Deliver Hope cat trailer, hurtling this poor marine through the air. I'm gonna do some more tweaks and I'll get back to you in a minute. Your sentence may yet be prevented. Humanity's imprisonment is a kindness. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, this is it. The Halo Promethean Diorama by The Domain. And honestly, I just could not be happier with it. Everything came together exactly as I envisaged. I had a smaller diorama like this in my bedroom and I thought I'd extend it to basically double the scale and it really paid off. The highlights for me, I love this Didact versus Fireteam Majestic fight. I think it has so much life and you can really imagine what they're doing in that moment. I love Fireteam Venom. I think all of their painted weapons are just phenomenal. And especially, I love this beam rifle. I love how Spartan Madsen's offering sniper support. Really all three of these just sniping down. I love the concentration of Marines and how they all have a sergeant or a squad leader and they've all, they're all engaged in their own separate battles. That 70s dude and his hobbies explosion just blows my mind every time. And then I love this little Commander Lasky, he's doing a great job. And then this Arbiter and Chief standoff, you imagine that they would be defending the assets of the Mammoth, they're locking it down as much as possible, and there are just so many Prometheans. Let me know in the comments who do you think will win this battle, it's quite interesting. I love this jump pack with the energy sword as well. Just everything about this diorama is awesome. And I hope you guys enjoyed. This is part three of three. And thank you very much for giving me the support on all these parts. Let me know what kind of diorama you would like to see next. I'm thinking about a Halo Wars 2 diorama. We'll see if that comes to fruition. And other than that, it's four weeks time until I'm back to Hong Kong. I need all your support. I need you to rally behind me. Keep the likes and comments flowing. We will make it to Hong Kong and we will continue videos as long as my channel just continues to increase. This has been another epic diorama with The Domain. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I'll add a badass montage at the end of all of this stuff. Make sure to check out all my other videos. And the Halo Heroes Didact himself is signing off.
Base under attack. Roger that. Load it up. Over now. Professor, let's see what kind of galaxy we woke up to. Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. Now today, it is about 36 hours until I move to Hong Kong. So you may be asking yourself, why are you making a video? I don't quite know myself, but this is a video you guys really wanted. A Halo Wars 2 banished slash Halo Infinite diorama. I'm tremendously excited about it and it's gonna be absolutely wild. We're gonna start as we mean to go on with this beast here. This thing is a funny one. My dad actually made this when I was a child and it's been sat in the attic for many years and I just realized it would make an awesome banished base. So, we're gonna start it off with this anti-air gun. Now, I was really inspired by the new Halo Infinite trailer, so I thought I'd do something inspired by that. We've got this anti-air gun, and that's what's starting off this banished diorama. I think first I'll get some base plates down. We got all of these bases here today, and this one here, and we've also got this little rod here, which is really useful for a banished banshee. Very nice. We'll just secure that on there. That's the start of our diorama. So, I've also got some very interesting pieces here. All of these... <laughs> all of these cave pieces. These are from some old Megablox pirate sets, maybe. And these are going to sort of set the scene. My idea is that this is a banished camp around a forerunner facility that's inside a cave. Maybe on Zeta Halo, because that's apparently where Halo Infinite's set. And we're going to have the cave the UNSC forces are pushing in, and maybe that some of them have already been shot down. So we'll attach some of these base plates together. Okay. Desert bricks, always nice. And we can just find some little ones to secure all these base plates together. And yeah, guys, it is, um, at the time of recording this, it is basically 36 hours till I move to Hong Kong. 
start my brand new life with my girlfriend. Couldn't be happier about it. It's a little stressful getting there, but we're gonna be a-okay. Now, we need to have enough space for the main event. The UNSC did not come unequipped for the challenge. We've got the UNSC elephant, driven by one of the old articulation commandos. I love that guy. The elephant is breaking through the ice cave and storming towards the banished encampment. We got some more of these. Now, the anti-air gun has unfortunately already destroyed the recon. This UNSC wasp, it was scouting out the area, maybe even just looking for foreigners, and it accidentally found the banished. Break these wings off here. The cover art for Halo Infinite actually has a downed wasp, so that's pretty iconic. And the wasp crashed straight into this ghost. This is from Scott McKee, Warmaster Customs. It's this old sort of PVC destruction of a ghost. We've got pieces flying everywhere. I love this thing. So this is going to be what the wasp crashed into. What should we add next? I think we've got some more UNSC vehicles incoming. The UNSC Cobra, the Forge Hog versus Banished. This is perfect for Halo Wars 2. And then we've got this Forerunner structure. Now this is what the Banished are going to be defending up on this platform here. We'll have this Cobra in docking position so it's ready to fire. We've got loads more Banished vehicles. The Ghost, we've got a Banished Goliath, and we've got a Goblin Mech Suit. I love this thing, it's so cool. Maybe we'll have that defending the cannon up there. The Kinsano Cyclops, that'll be dealing damage in the battlefield. You've got that 70s dude explosion with three marines being hurtled through the air, pushing through into the facility. But they've just been blown up by the banished Goliath. We've got a couple more rocky formations. We'll lay them down in just a random order for now. And then, woo, this is looking pretty good. I'm very happy with this. Now we've got way more figures than necessary. <laughs> We got so many cool figures here. We'll start with a couple of drop pods. These are just reinforcements for the Banish. One of my favorites, Remnant Hunters. They are awesome figures. And Hunters hunt in pairs alongside Banished Goliath. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> Inspired by the art design of Halo Infinite, I decided to use all of my new Halo Combat Evolved Marines. And we got eight of these bad boys. They also kind of match the color style of the Mega Construct Sergeant Forge, which is perfect. And this guy will be operating the Warthog. Warthog coming in. Such gorgeous figures. I cannot wait to get hold of some Halo Infinite ones too. Sergeant Forge here. He's gonna be leading the charge, hopefully taking out some banished Halo Wars Spartans. Always amazing. We've got two metallic green ones, and then also another three from that 70s dude. His custom work is insane. Get them some weapons. Uh, Spirit Forge, we're gonna need a little backup. Douglas is missing his helmet, so he's gonna go on top of the elephant. Let's put Jerome on top of the elephant too. He's gonna be trying to take out that Banshee. Alice, straight in the thick of it with Sergeant Ford. Two more of these Red Team Spartans. Gonna be trying to take out this ghost. Okay. It's getting a little difficult now to imagine exactly how this diorama is gonna go down because we don't have many banished. So, let's start filling this encampment. We got three different armored silver elites. They're gonna be coming out of the main fortress. Three orange elites, all with energy swords. They'll have been coming out of these drop pods. I'm always inspired by the Halo Wars two cutscenes where Atriox just seems to have an army of banished that's absolutely enormous. This is what I'm trying to achieve with this one. Oh no, he lost both of his legs. We'll have three of these new articulation grunts. They'll all be by the goblin. We'll have to have one inside. Now we've got all of these red banished elites and they're going to be going across this boardwalk and they'll be led by their leader, Shipmaster Letvolier, one of the main banished leaders in Halo Wars 2. Wow, no, without a helmet, everything's fallen off today. There he is. Ready to engage the enemy. Heresy! Remove this filth! Okay. It's looking really good. Now, the Banished thought they had this base locked down, but actually some Spartans have already found their way in. We've got Locke, 
I know it's kind of not Halo Wars 2 canonical or anything, but we've got Locke with a jetpack. He's coming straight in. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Come back, Locke. I know people don't like you, but I do. So he's just blasting through these elites, and he's reinforced by Spartan Veil and Spartan Book. But I've kind of given some Call of Duty tack pads to, just for fun. In sort of book style, kicking an elite right in the face. But it's not all victories here. We've got two Halo Wars 2 Marines. They've already been slaughtered and taken prisoner by Decimus, one of the war chieftains of the Banished. He's looking onto his kingdom after killing these guys, and he's gonna have some reinforcements as well. Here's Decimus's two right hand men. <laughs> Sorry, that's just. I guess that's normal, just it's Hamilton. Is it? Yeah. Here's Decimus's two right hand brutes. They're gonna be either side of him here. And we've got two more banished brutes. And I know where they're gonna go. We've got the king of the show, the lord of the banished, Atriox. Once again, at that 70s dude custom. I guess it would only be appropriate that he's taking out Red Team as he did in Halo Wars 2. And then we've got these two banished brutes from the brute customizer pack. And this brute as well, they're all going to be coming alongside Atriox. We'll have one of these old articulation elites driving the ghost, because you don't really pay attention to him. And then I love this one. I used this in my uh, Banished Reveal trailer. Sort of like translucent plasma rifles. We are losing literal daylight now, so we've got to get a move on. And you know, I like to use old articulation still, but I just put them at the back of the diorama, because they don't need to be the focal point. Now, I know that uh, this isn't canonical at all, but I just want to include this Halo Heroes Jewel and Dharma because it's so cool. It's just so beautiful how it's translucent underneath his armor. It's so nice. So we're going to include him, we're going to cheat, put him in the game even though he died in Halo 5, spoilers. Jewel and Dharma, he's kind of sneaking over here, incognito style. <laughs> We've not got too many more today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to add, as I always like to really do with dioramas, the Arbiter and the Master Chief, because they are the definition of iconic in Halo, and I guess they just happen to be in this battle as well. This is, this is taking place on the installation, so who knows? Master Chief has got that really nice green-tinted metallic assault rifle. Jewel and Dharma versus the Master Chief on this rocky mountain top. There we go. Just gonna do some more tweaks and I'll get back to you in a minute. And bit bat bam, we are done. This is my Halo Wars 2 banished slash Halo Infinite diorama and I could not be happier with it. I can't believe, because when I started making this today, we just had the bare table, and I know that some of the feedback from the last one that was that there was too much empty space. So we got this enormous tower, which has been sat in the attic collecting dust for like 10 years, and we kitted it out with more banish than you could shake a stick at, and it really tells a story as well, which is what I like. The AA gun took out this wasp, which was the early reconnaissance, and then the UNSC, alerted of the banished position, stormed through and are throwing everything they can at the battle. To point out some highlights, and I just love so much of this, this little elite ranger is really nice up here. I love that I got to use the goblin mech in the first diorama, and Decimus is always a really cool one too. Then I love that Fireteam Osiris are pushing through, they're the first to break the line, and they're about to just plow through these elites. I've actually altered it a little bit now, where I've got Kinsano fighting the two Legolo Hunters. She's throwing one of them through the air, which is really badass. And the Arbiter versus this Elite here, both in a standoff. The Banished really showing the Spartans who's boss, and also killing this Marine here. We've got- whoa! <laughs> I guess that's an auto light. <laughs> I guess that light's telling me I'm doing this diorama till too late at night. But we've got Forge here, 
charging through with combat evolved marines. I mean, this is this is incredible. I absolutely love this diorama. This is the fourth and final diorama while I'm in England. I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope I left it on a real high. Please enjoy this montage at the end of the video, and thank you very much for tuning in today. This video will come out while I am actually living in Hong Kong. I will have already made the transition and my life will have been turned upside down. So any support that you can give me on these videos is much appreciated. Thank you very much. For yeah. And there goes the light. No, come back. There we go. This was another video with the domain and the goblin mech suit is signing off. I've been living in Asia now for four years, and this is the first time I have ever had a display cabinet in my apartment. So you better believe I will kit this out with as much Halo as possible. Whoa, look at this. This is, it's so beautiful to see, especially with all the Halo. <laughs> <laughs> is it bad? Are you laughing at my hair? It's so beautiful, especially all the Halo Infinite sets. And also, shout out to my hair. Um, apparently, we were cutting it last night and then the razor ran out of battery. So it is a bit of a half-hack job. But look at this, this it's just so beautiful. Today I'm gonna guide you through my Halo Infinite diorama. I hope this will be like a succeeding series where I update you every time I add new figures. And there will also be an additional part of this video that is exclusive to Patreon because those guys are just supporting me. They're unbelievable right now. I wanted to do something to help out. Check out Patreon 
Patreon for loads of exclusive perks. Alright, let, let's let's have a look. Pass me the camera. Also, shout out to my my girlfriend with uh, she's literally wearing the light on her head right now as extra uh, it's it's ridiculous. Here we go. Look at this. This is my Halo Infinite Diorama. I'm gonna talk you through step by step the thought process behind this. It's obviously greatly inspired by the brand new Skiff Intercept. I just got this set up and I really hope you enjoyed the review of this set yesterday and the speed build two days prior to that. This is awesome. I love the alternate build of the Skiff Intercept way more than the original. I've got this little Billy the Grunt. He's operating the turret on the top and then he's got some reinforcements coming around the back as well. So let's start from left to right. First of all, we've got the Banished, and shout out to my blind bag videos, there are just so many of them now. So many elites and an unbelievable amount of chips dubos. I mean, look at them all, it's so ridiculous. Alright, so starting off we've got the Skiff Intercept alternate build, the Spider is amazing, and then we've got the Grunt on the turret, round the back we've got a Grunt and another elite, and then a Craig the Brute Halo Hero Series 12. We've got the Jackal from the Warthog. He's checking out this Marine who's having his face eaten. There's been a huge flood outbreak here as well. And then we've got the two Brutes from the Skiff Intercept and a couple of Elites here. This Grunt is sort of just kicking the Chips Dubo on the floor. This Marine's being assaulted by the Elite. The Master Chief is probably my favorite thing about this diorama. He's slinging a Grunt through the air while firing down on an Elite. And he's about to square off with Craig the Brute one-on-one. -on -one. Further across, we've got the Elite from the Mongoose. He's about to face off with the Mongoose itself with those two amazing Marines. I love the Bearded Marine especially. And then we've got another Jekyll. He's leading the charge against all these Marines, all these Chips Dubos. This one's firing against the Grunt from the Skiff Intercept, and then this one from the Warthog. There's a couple of downed Marines over there, and usually when there's a downed figure, I just attach a Flood. He's just sucking his face off and then a couple more are fighting the Flood as well. We've got the Spartan Mark 7 from the Skiff Intercept at the back, and then a couple more Marines, one of them with a plasma rifle. I mean, I just love this diorama. Look at it, it's, there's so much life involved. So much life in this diorama. If you would like a tutorial on how to make this diorama, I'd love to show you guys. And, oh, it's, it's fantastic, it's, it's just so good. It's so good to have this kind of diorama. It's so good to have this kind of display in Hong Kong. I could have never imagined that I would, I mean, let alone have this kind of display cabinet, but also be able to display it with these figures and show you guys on YouTube. My dreams are coming true right now, honestly. And that's it for today's video. I'm about to take this over to Patreon and show you a couple more of these shelves. So if you'd like to see, why don't you head on over to Patreon. Don't feel any pressure to donate, but it's just a way of thanking my fans who are helping me out because finances are tough right now, and I really do love your support and any, any support, liking this video, commenting, subscribing, they're all amazing ways to show support as well. We're also having a baller of a time over at the Mega Constructs domain, our brand new Facebook group, the place to be if you wanna chat Halo and just have a good time with the community. And also check out my Discord. There are so many good ways to connect right now. I, I'm in love with this community. All right, this was another video with The Domain. Thank you very much for tuning in today, and Billy the Grunt is signing off.
This is UNSC Pelican Echo 216. Can you hear me? Good morning and welcome to my new live stream. And today we're doing something quite, quite unreal. Like, like I don't even know how to describe it. We're going to make a massive video alongside this stream. I didn't want to just do a stream, I wanted to do like a high production diorama video for you guys. Literally every 2020 Halo Infinite figure. I have every set. We've got the Spartan Marine gear pack figures, a load of different Marines. I customized them in many, many different ways. And the AC Pelican Bro Hammer, I think I'm gonna have him in some kind of hologram. Loads of the blind bags, Halo Heroes, the two ACs from new infinite blind bags. We're gonna have a fire team Venom in metallic green. I have four different Master Chiefs from Halo Infinite already, but I decided to use the Master Chief that comes in the uh, Pelican. I just thought he was the best. I did want to use the Defense Point Showdown one, but this this one works. Then we've got all of our Banished. I mean, where do we begin? All of these elites are kind of crazy right now. So many of those blue ones, and I particularly like the dark black undersuit from the Mongoose. A load of Hunters, four of those in total. Hyperius. All of these Brutes as well. We might open a couple more if we run out of Brutes. Then a load of Elite Ultras in silver, cream, and red. We got a ton of Grunts, an absolute ton of little Billies. For Jeremiah the Jackals. I added some drones and elite rangers as well, just because they're fun. We've got all of these base plates. Every single one of these is courtesy of Bam Bam Productions. He is an absolute legend. Then we've got vehicles galore. We've got the new Warthog, Skiff Intercept, Alternate Build, the Banshee, Turret Takedown, the Ghost Hijacked, the Breach Exosuit, a couple of Mongooses, a Hornet. Pelican, boys. Whoa, flip that round. Pelican Inbound. Now, the pelican is going to be the main focal point of this diorama. What happens at the beginning of the Halo Infinite campaign demo is that the pelican gets grounded by the Mac cannons. Also, look at it. When you compare the pelican inbound now, when you've got it on camera, and you compare it to this Mac cannon, this Mac cannon looks tiny. The cannon will have taken the pelican out. The pelican will have crashed in many different pieces. The banished are starting to round up all of the survivors, and then they're going to have a, a temporary camp that they've built around the destroyed pelican. We're also going to have some rigs here where we can suspend a hornet and a banshee uh, just in a dogfight. And we are gonna do this all in one stream. We're not stopping the stream until it's finished, but I think we're gonna make really good pace on it. I'm thinking this should like open up and that's where the wreckage is. The pelican's just sort of been smashed open, the banished, have created a fortification around it. All right, so we'll have a piece that's flown off here. Vehicles. I think the best way to start a diorama sometimes is just getting all your vehicles on the table. This string is just gonna <laughs> constantly just be going in my head. Choose the UNSC or the Banished first. Once you start putting one unit down and then you can sort of adapt to diorama around like incoming forces. So this is gonna be a Banished camp, hence why we've got the alternate build of the Skiff Intercept, and I'm thinking the Banished have actually taken the Master Chief captive, or maybe the Master Chief is still fighting inside, and then the Warthog will be part of the UNSC assault. I'm always inspired by the opening cutscene of one of the Halo Reach missions. You boys know which one I'm talking about, where all of the UNSC are just storming in like an enormous army towards the Covenant stronghold. Detonating in three, two. I want it like that. The UNSC are just swarming this Banished camp. The Banished didn't really know what they were getting themselves into when they captured the UNSC's main protagonist. <laughs> Defending the camp and stopping the oncoming Warthog. I love this. Oh no. Oh no. I was about to say I love it and then I broke it. I think the old build has way more to offer than the actual Skiff Intercept. The new Ghost. I was pleasantly surprised by this. We've also got the two Mongooses. So we'll have one Mongoose is going after the remnants of this little pelican. One mongoose assaulting alongside the warthog. We've got a load of barricades in this tub, including a load of muzzle flares. I basically want as many muzzle flares as possible. It is the way to be. Put Billy in the pilot seat. <laughs> Hi guys! He'll go in the pilot seat. 
of the ghost. Or maybe Billy can be hijacked by somebody while he's driving the ghost. <laughs> he can barely hold on. Then we've got a load of barricades. One of the main things I'm going to be doing is building this banished fortress. That's like the main thing I want to be building. Just general barricades we'll put there for now. Fuel rod canister never hurt anyone. And why not just a barrel? A barrel of fun this live stream is. Now, this Breacher exosuit. I'm wondering what to do with this. Should we have it fighting the mongoose? Should we have it inside the base fighting the Master Chief? Should we have it defending the Mac Cannon? Let me know. Watchtower here, like a little watchtower. This is from the uh, Brute Lance set. We've also got this Forerunner Spire, and we'll put that just over here for now. So I was gonna have a fire team of these Mark 7s, and we'll have one Mark 7 fighting a Brute on on the Mac Cannon. Like I said, guys, this is your diorama. Whatever you want me to build, I shall build. Okay, a legendary box of all of my very best figures. If you have a look in here, I expect like golden light to pour out of this when I open it. Oh. These are all of my bagged Seal, Halo heroes, and rare figures. We're looking here a little later because there's definitely some more banished in here. I guess the next thing we need is my construction box and we're gonna build some kind of banished barricade. So we're gonna just start by getting all of these white and gray pieces out. I just want this support structure to be basic white and gray, like it's brick by brick mortar. We're gonna have pretty much like lush green in most places. Around the pelican, we'll start with the dark green, closer to the banished camp. But then when you get close to the actual down pelican, it's like raw dirt under a load of these flat pieces to just lock them all together. A little dirt structure here, moving into like more solid green towards the base. Let's lock that in. So the banished base, it can have like a main gateway into it. Add a singular infection form under the Mac cannon to foreshadow the upcoming flood diorama. Whoa. Okay, a single flood form you say? I know which one to add. It's got to be our flood infected Billy the Grunt. Inside the cave was a foreigner research facility on the flood and a little spore came out and infected Billy the Grunt. The Warthog, I guess, is just planning to straight up smash through that gate. Alternate silver and white bricks running along the outside. It's looking pretty fun. And then the exact same thing. We're just gonna layer these along. Hong Kong Avery. You cannot have a diorama without Avery. Well, we got two here. First of all, Avery, the ODST, has always been the mascot of my channel. We've got the UK Avery. This is the original Old Articulation United Kingdom Space Command. And then this one is the Hong Kong Space Command Avery. Custom Simon Spartan. <laughs> this is my own Spartan, so we'll definitely include him in the diorama as well. Let's lock it down, boys. All right, we need one more silver. Not bad at all. <laughs> Not bad at all. Layer on some of this color. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. That's a load more green, everybody. Got all of our figures. Here's our banished. A little elite ultra platoon. Where are all of the UNSC gonna be coming from? How many of them are there gonna be? Because there's gonna be so many. Putting down our silver elite ultras now. They'll have already slayed like quite a lot of marines that are coming in. Let's just start locking off some of these. Okay, now we're talking, now we're talking. It's really picking up pace. Brute versus Mark Seven on the top. The mongoose is about to face off against that skiff intercept spider. We've got our Billy the Grunt. I've already got a little bit of tack there ready. Very nice. All right, then we're gonna have all of our brutes. We'll be in a massive fight fight against the Mark 7s and some more Marines, probably the gear pack Marines. We've got these brutes, they've got a red shoulder, so they're like maybe the captains. Yeah, we'll have the two red elites inside the base as well. So the banished red ones are all like the main boys. What should we call this fire team of green Spartans? Halo 117 man, fire team Olive Vine. It's not bad, fire team Olive. Grunts being wrecked by the Hazop. So these are like the highest command banished. They'll be the ones that are fighting the Master Chief inside the compound. It's like, what do you do with all these hunters? Let's have the other two, they'll be in a pair and they'll be fighting whatever made it back here. I don't even know yet. There'll be something there. So we're building this Master Chief standoff. The Master Chief needs a nice assault rifle. The hunter is sort of flailing in the air as the Master Chief has boarded him. He's jumped on top of the hunter. He's got a grunt in his hand as well. He's taken no prisoners today. Master Chief. Let's have him shoot in a jackal. If your assault rifle cannot fit a muzzle flare on. Grab yourself a piece of tack 
pull off like the absolute tiniest amount possible. Now that's pretty cool. We've got the AC Trailblazer and also the Master Chief from Infinite Series 1. The Jackal is not having any of this, he's running for it. <laughs> And I always say with a diorama, have it fluid, you know? Just figure it out as it goes along. So I, I had the Master Chief looking down at the Jackal, but now he's shooting the Jackal, but his reflexes have already told him that Elite is the next priority target. We're gonna have the Brutes chasing after the Master Chief. This one's gonna try and get him with the Shock Rifle. Whatever the Shock Rifle does, we don't even know what it does in game yet. The Spartan Trailblazer, who's also snuck into the camp. This is like one of the main pieces of the diorama. We need a lot of muzzle flares going on. All the snipers. We got that Convert Ops EVA coming in. Really nice. And then do we have any more snipers? He's gonna be trying to plant the flag somewhere. More symbolic than anything that they're that they're pushing ground. Next is gonna be these brutes. Let's get our brutey boys. Currently, we've got these Spartans here, our Mark 7s. We're in business there, Mark 7. Let's see what your teammates can muster up. So we'll have a couple of them fighting this renegade hunter. Captain on top of the turret. Custom domain Spartan. He'll have the flamethrower from the Halo Hero Series 5 Master Chief. Flamethrower straight in the face. Couple more little base plates. We'll have one Mark 7 and he's gonna be trying to take out the Brute. It's sort of like across flames there. This Brute is charging straight at this Marine Sniper's Magnum. This Mark 7 assaulting this Brute. The muzzle flares, they come in uh, two pieces, but really I think it's better to just detach them and then you can have just two separate muzzle flares to be fair. I mean, why not? Face reveal for Craig. So there's Craig. <laughs> Just really angry there. Another one that's been shot dead here. And maybe there's one brute that's still alive that is charging in here. Let's work on our Warthog diorama. We're currently on an hour and a half on this stream and honestly, we're doing really well. So we've done the Defense Point Showdown mostly. You can't have a diorama without suicide grunts. Blowing things up, just getting in the way. Billy, no, don't do it. You have so much to live for. One Marine crawling from inside the wreckage there. Coming out from the side here. Don't give up on me now. We have another Spec Ops Spartan. I love this Bulldog with the added scope on top. I think it's so sweet. Machine gun in hand. This Hazard is taking care of business. Taking care of business. The Grunts know that there's no way that they can destroy a turret. So they may as well just try and charge it. One more Grunt coming in. And that's being run over by the Mongoose right now. Another Grunt running from over here. So let's get some more Marines in play. Noble Six's helmet as requested by the chat. Remember each. Let's get some marine reinforcements. Gear pack marines charging in. I love this one. This is one of my favorite customs. Like, just, it's so cool with the bayonet. I absolutely love it. Storming in. Let's have some more marines first. Shooting at the grunts. Marines? I guess marines are okay, Damien. You don't see them getting as much hate as stormtroopers. I think they're pretty good. Muzzle flare on that battle rifle. This one's got an SMG. We haven't got anyone in this warthog. We need some drivers. We need some gunners. David's on the machine gun turret as requested charging in with two grenades suicide marine against suicide grunt demolition marine i think he's gonna pay less attention to the grunt and more attention to that hunter that's coming in fighting the spartan tack pad marine he's uh i just absolutely love this tack pad for sandbags everyone else is providing cover fire for him get behind me sir the next thing we're gonna do is work on our elite ultra setup this pelican pilot i'm afraid he's uh he's not gonna have done too well in this diorama. Inside are all of these chips dubos. We'll have more over here, but basically the Pelican was carrying a lot of Marines when it went down, unfortunately. Yeah, we've got all of these. They were taken out pretty early on. It's not your day today, guys. Assault rifles everywhere. Then again, most days in Halo are unfortunate for the Marines there. There's a lot of casualties. Attach into the back of his torso so the Elite can just hold him and suspend him in the air. Sorry, bro hammer. He didn't make it. So I really wanted to incorporate the AC Pelican bro hammer. Basically, there's gonna be a corresponding transmission from his last known position to sort of like desperately plead for help. That's why the uh, UNSC are here because he sent out this uh, emergency beacon. Help me guys, I'm about to be stabbed. Please guys, reinforce me. 
I'm dying. The Banished are defending the UNSC from this side, but the UNSC are also attacking from the rear. So Billy the Grunt has been charging in. Then we've got uh, one more Craig. Oh, so Billy the Grunt has accidentally splattered this Craig. Fire team Olive Vine here. This rod is a perfect way for this Hazop to be circling through the air. The Master Chief is the only real objective here. They're trying to get there as quick as possible. The other one is running at this character. Let me know in the chat which should the Jackal be charging at. We'll have that orange recon blasting the Jackal. Who should this brute be fighting? There we go. We got some Spartans in the action. The Anubis is charging up the Breacho Exosuit's body and just hammering him straight in the face. <laughs> More and more base plates here. Hunter number one and hunter number two. Okay, this is my bag of like extra Halo heroes, things like that. Just some really cool figures. Four of these nicely colored Halo heroes weapons. The first one I just put down, the England Avery, literally just representing where I lived in England. Hong Kong Avery, signifying the transition to the domain. Ain't that a celebration? Once we finish the diorama, we're gonna open the vault. You guys can tell me which specific Halo heroes you want, where on the diorama. Halo Heroes Series 11 figures. They're charging this exosuit. An EVA will give him a muzzle flare. Spartan Soldier Dogface. This Spartan Warmaster. I added the turret there. Then we've got these two actual barricades to really just lock off the fortress, you know? Imperial Grunt. Billy, you've got to defend your homeland. This is looking actually so cool. So nice and fleshed out. We've got all of these blue boys and they're gonna make our water, just like a little lake. Ain't too shabby, eh? Ain't too shabby. These guys, Hemby, just standing in the water. They've been keeping this pool guard. Why have they been keeping this pool guard, you may ask? There's a dead Spartan inside. Those two didn't make it, but those elites are guarding the pool from trespassers. The guy's tracking beacon is still live, so they're going to get some unexpected company. And he's just taken out an elite dual wield plasma rifles. Let's put this rod in here and we'll suspend him off the floor. Plasma launcher. There we go. He's running away from that Spartan pretty much. That's our water structure. Jump pack elite rangers right on top of the pelican alongside our boy Hyperius and he's being choked out by the elite. We've got some very special Spartans here fighting the elite on this rocky terrain. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finished the main section of this diorama. They're a seriously cool little fire team firing toward that jackal. Some criticisms of my diorama is that they're too full, that there's too many figures. I say nonsense. You just can't have too many figures on these dioramas. All of my like most prized figures, we've got to add the last vehicles of this diorama and they involve the ceiling. <laughs> So we are gonna attempt to string vehicles from this ceiling. We got a big bag of yarn, <laughs> and we're gonna try and display these vehicles from the ceiling. First of all, I need a pair of scissors. Banshee versus Hornet, or Hornet versus Banshee. Which one's it gonna be, boys? Welcome to Knitting with the Domain. We don't know if the Hornet's confirmed for Halo Infinite. I sure hope so. All right, so we got our two lots of strings here. <laughs> And we're gonna try and suspend them from the ceiling. So we'll have the Hornet up high. Now I've got to try it off. Hornet secured. We got ourselves a Hornet. I feel like this Banshee's gonna be a little more difficult to actually like suspend properly. We're gonna tie this off and then we're gonna see if we need to attach like a third string to angle it better. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's good. It's flying to the side, he's strafing. The Hornet was chasing after the Banshee. The Banshee just quickly pulled to the right. We got an aerial dogfight on our diorama. That's wild. We are on about the three hour 40 mark. We gotta have Decimus taking out the UNSC here. This is such a crazy cool figure. Shipmaster Letvolia. We need to have him in the fight. The bad boy himself, Atriox. We'll have them as more UNSC casualties. Okay, last one will be Spartan Palmer. And then we've got all we need for this diorama. All right, so that's the Spartan Helljumper. Spartan Palmer leading the Marines there. Banished leaders leading an assault on the downed Pelican. Decimus smashing down that Marine. That's some more Brutes. Atriox just standing proud over his troops. And then the last figure on the diorama, Shipmaster Letvalier. We have got every single figure on this diorama. This is 
absolutely nuts, guys. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Free falling off the hornet, as per request from the chat. <laughs> Never before has something like this been attempted. A diorama that was genuinely built from the ground up with the community. You guys were such a massive part of this, whether you were just egging me on or suggesting so many little details that went into this diorama. Certainly maybe the biggest diorama figure count wise, like this is outrageous. The UNSC forces, they are storming this banished compound and they tried to capture the Master Chief. They weren't very successful, but they did slay all of his Marine brothers. The Brohammer, who sent out his last coordinates via hologram only hours ago. This epic standoff of Brutes versus Spartans mostly Mark 7s, taking down the Breacher exosuit with the Anubis and Gravity Hammer in hand. The SS Motion and the Domain Avery fighting off against these two hunters together with some Spartan backup. Leading into this elite camp that's protecting these assets that went down during the Pelican crash. These Spartans facing off against these elites here. The only sad thing is I've got to take it apart. We are on the road to 30k subscribers. I'm going to be uploading almost every day up until that point. Stay awesome out there. The domain is signing off. Contact with Visegrad Relay was lost last night. All signals flatlined at 2600 hours. Only thinks it might be the local insurrection. Noble leader, I'm seeing heat sinks in the structure ahead. Noble leader, enemy dropships inbound. Who's next?
again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. This may look like another video on the SDCC Master Chief set, which is coming soon, but today we're actually starting our brand new series, Versus. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, Today, we have the Master Chief versus Brute Chieftain. I'll go into details about exactly why I'm doing this. Uh, this is gonna be for a huge competition next week. But when I made the first diorama, I was so excited, I just had to show you guys. I am in love with this thing. 117 Master Chief from Halo Infinite versus the brand new Series 13 Halo Heroes Brute Chieftain. This Master Chief is actually from the Defense Point Showdown. I'll talk you through the exact backstory. Let's uh, move this tripod up a little Little bit so you can see from above and yeah really this is just a brand new inspiration I had why make massive dioramas all the time when you can create very intimate little dios between just a couple of characters. I think it's way more intimate and gives way for a lot more detail. So here we have the Defense Point Showdown Master Chief with the Infinite Series 2 Blind Bag Energy Sword. He's got a gorgeous assault rifle from I believe Halo Hero Series 12 and that's got that muzzle flare heading right down to the Brute Chieftain. He's also got a custom shotgun which I received in the mail quite a long time ago from a really cool fan on our Discord. It's painted very nicely and really what's happened here is the Chieftain was attacking a poor Marine. He's not really part of the diorama in terms of, like, he's more he's more part of the backdrop than actually part of the fight. But the Chieftain has been smashing down on this Marine. He's kicked up a load of rocks and dirt in the process, and the Master Chief is trying to swoop in and save the Marine. I think he's a little late, but he's definitely going to take out that Brute Chieftain. That Halo Heroes Brute Chieftain, just one of my favorite new figures. He's got a spike grenade and also his brand new gravity hammer. The way it's got yellow lights on the hammer really makes it pulse so it makes sense that it's smashing this marine. These rocks are all on Zeta Halo. They've been kicked up and we've got a couple of loose ones as well that you can sort of just insert into the diorama. Then all of this explosion from the marine. I think maybe he's hit one of the marine's grenades or just maybe his backpack and there's, sh there's fire shooting off in every direction. And that also gave way to me being able to insert this rod to suspend the Master Chief. I thought that worked really well. The Infinite Marines are fantastic. This Chief is fantastic. And yeah, I'm just very happy with how this turned out, to be honest. I've made two of them, and I'm gonna have a second episode coming out uh, sort of mid next week, but I wanted to show you the first one, because yeah, it's great. It's it's really cool. I especially like this sort of gas that's ignited and is shooting straight down. The whole thing just, it, it feels very natural. So this is going to be the first episode of our new series where I'm going to be premiering these micro dioramas as much as possible. Always 1v1, and this is going to lead into a competition that we're going to be running on our Discord late next week. And the prize is enormous. So you want to stay tuned for that. Really, in the meantime, you can start to think about what two figures you want in your diorama. We're going to do a great competition where on the Discord you can submit your own micro diorama in either video or photo form. But I want to leave all the details till the second episode of this series where I'm going to have an ODST Recon versus Promethean Sniper. That's it for today, my friends. You all stay awesome out there and keep your eyes peeled for a very very big piece of news that's dropping at the beginning of next week. You will not want to miss out. It's gonna, it's gonna change a lot of things around here. I'm really excited about it. Next week is gonna be a huge one for the domain. Stay tuned. Thanks for your support. And the diorama is siding off. Take care of those elites. He's mine. once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. I'm back a little sooner than expected the next day with another versus diorama and I know that when I did the first episode, the Master Chief versus Brute Chieftain, I said it would be four or five days before the second episode but I just got too excited. I made this overnight and I just had to show you all. This is episode two of the Domain versus series today. We have a Halo Wars diorama, Reaper Marami versus Sergeant Forge. The Arbiter against Sergeant Forge. Look at this thing, it's fantastic, guys. I just, I really needed to share it with you all. This is the second episode of our Versus series, and I'll go into details about what this diorama represents, my thoughts behind it, and also how you can enter into a competition to win something massive. You will come with me. 
Why don't we put the lady down and talk about this man to freak? As you wish. So I took a lot of inspiration here from one of the cutscenes from Halo Wars 1. And you guys know which one I'm talking about. Where Anders and Forge are ambushed by the Arbiter. The Arbiter kidnaps Anders. And it's a very iconic scene. It's one of my favorite soundtracks in all of the games. And this is it brought to life in as much detail as I wanted. Originally when I thought of this diorama I was going to have the Arbiter with loads of Halo Wars Marines around him and then Forge with a load of elites around him. And I also kind of thought of the Know Your Enemy trailer from Halo Wars 2, but I settled with this. I wanted to keep it simple, but I really wanted to represent that jungle and I did that with these awesome jungle terrain pieces, these little plants. Then I started with a very basic base plate and layered it non-stop with metallic green. A lot of these green bricks are actually left over from the Pelican inbound and I really always try and use sloped ones, curved sections off. I like to really try and make it as varied as possible. Really, the one of the end scenes of Halo Wars 1, when the Arbiter actually fights Forge, it's a real reminder of how much bigger the elites are compared to humans, and I wanted to really represent that. So we've got the Arbiter Reaper Morami from his Halo Heroes appearance. He's got those dual wield energy swords that have a gorgeous crackling blue effect to them, and this is one of the best Arbiters I've seen in Mega Constructs. Some of the Halo 2 and Halo 3 Arbiters are very lacking in paint details actually, but this one has perfect gold highlights to it. Then we've got the Forge. He comes with his Halo Heroes shotgun. This is the Halo Heroes one, not the Forge Hog versus Banished Goliath. He's got his shotgun and then this assault rifle is actually a custom painted one from one of my friends on Discord and Facebook. And then I added a little flash grenade here. Now my thoughts behind this is Forge is engaged with this elite. He doesn't want to appear timid. He's trying to scale him up, but behind the shotgun, he's concealing this flashbang. So at the last moment, he might throw this down to try and take advantage of the battlefield, and I think a great showdown's about to happen. That's also the thing with dioramas. Your figures don't always have to be fighting. They could be definitely scaling each other up for a fight. And the Arbiter sort of treading on this foliage, moving up this small hill. This rock sort of locks it all together. This is actually from one of the new helmet sets. Really, I'm just very, very pleased with this. It's the exact same as yesterday. I made the Master Chief versus Brute Chieftain and then I really just wanted to show it off to you guys. This is a reminder that we are hosting a huge competition on our Discord later this week. More details will surface in the next few days, but right now just know that you will have to create a micro diorama like this one, a 1v1 battle, and we'll have the full details later, but you can start the hype train by heading over to our Discord right now. We got a load of fun things you can do on our Discord. In about three or four days, I'll come out with episode three of this micro build series. And on episode three, I'll have all the details on exactly how you can enter. Thank you very much for tuning in today. This was another video with The Domain. I hope you enjoyed this micro diorama. I know you enjoyed episode one. And this is a series that I could go hard on. I have so many ideas. And this video in particular was actually suggested by Not Kraken Colt. He's one of our great members on YouTube and Facebook. So thank you for the diorama suggestion. If you have an idea of what two figures you would like to see me duke out next. Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to pick one and make another episode with. Episode three will definitely be ODST Recon versus Promethean Soldier, but maybe I'll just get too excited and make another episode before then. Who knows? Thanks for tuning in and the diorama is signing off. Sergeant. Take care of those elites. He's mine.
Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. It's a beautiful day in Hong Kong and I'm right outside my center filming by the water for episode 3 of The Domain versus series. I've just had such a great response from episode 1 and 2. I couldn't wait to get out episode 3 and I had something very special planned for this one. Now originally I was going to have a Promethean Soldier versus ODST Recon but then I was re-watching some old cutscenes from Spartan and I just thought about this epic scene where Lasky shotguns this Promethean Knight straight in the face and I had to try and recreate it. It's one of my favorites. It was so dramatic at the time and here it is brought to life. I'm gonna run down this diorama and then also talk about our diorama competition that's happening on Discord right now, how you can enter and how you can win a sealed pelican inbound. You heard that right, we're doing a diorama competition to celebrate a thousand members on our Discord and you can win a pelican. So more details about that later, I'll start by breaking down this diorama, what inspired me. I mean, it's just so epic, look at this thing. I wanna first off, you know, it's that this is not set on board the UNSC Infinity, like this is clearly in some kind of Promethean chamber. My thoughts exactly were what if Lasky was actually kidnapped at that scene? Or specifically, what do you think the Prometheans would have done with Lasky? Would they have just killed him? Because they were after Halsey, right? They weren't really interested in Lasky, so maybe they would have killed him. Maybe they would have taken him to Julem Dharma. It's very unclear. So I would have liked to imagine that Lasky was touched by the Promethean Knight and immediately teleported ported away, and then he had some kind of desperate struggle for survival, maybe in Julem Dharma's quarters, maybe in some kind of Promethean corridor. It's all up to your own interpretation. So I started with the Promethean Knight and Lasky, but then I just couldn't help adding some poor Halo 4 Marine. I've put his hand so he's still sort of reaching out to Lasky, trying to help his boss, and Lasky doesn't really look like he needs that much help, but he's still up against a very formidable foe. We've also got Roland there, he's sort of observing the situation. Situation. I guess he would have stayed on board the Infinity, but I wanted to add him in. And then we have a Promethean Soldier. I know that's technically not Halo 4 either. Maybe this is set during Halo 5. Maybe it's just set in a parallel universe. Who knows? But we've got this Soldier. Lasky took him out first, and he's almost slipping off this little control module. And Lasky just fighting for his life. The one thing that I think a lot of people were annoyed about in the Spartan Ops cutscenes, the strength of Promethean Knights were just so random. Like, Palmer was pistol headshotting them in the face and destroying them, but his shotgun round, maybe it'll destroy the knight, maybe it'll just take his shields down. We're gonna talk about this base next, which I'm such a big fan of. We had a magnum just fell off and then a scatter shot underneath. I tried to tear it as much as possible, give it a real 3D element. So we've got a lot of transparent bricks that hold these two platforms together, and then a load of sort of blue translucent bricks with some lava. It's all just, you know, energy flowing through. Maybe this is in the middle of being destroyed, maybe Lasky's trying to evacuate. I like this little shield design. This is just a really nice way to block the two figures off, separate them almost, and then have them fighting over the side. It also shows which character asserts dominance, like the knight is coming over the shield, so he's sort of in control of the situation. Lasky sort of hiding a little bit behind that shield, taking cover. Then we got a load of these transparent smoothed off ones. I like these. They sort of just hold the build up really nicely. It's quite simple, but I think it's layered really well, and it does its job, which is, you know, supporting these characters in their epic duel. So overall, fellas, I'm just really impressed with this build. I love this series, and I think these 1v1 dioramas will be a mainstay of my YouTube channel. So many iconic representations of in-game cutscenes, even out-of-universe non-canon 1v1s are just really fun. So please do let me know if these are the kind of things you want to see in the future, and please fill the comments with more ideas of what you want to see next. A couple of these have been suggested by the community. I would love to hear what you have to say, and I would love to build one based on your idea. I hope I also went into enough detail about this. I forgot to fin these pieces up on the night before, but they look so menacing, so epic. I also had the Lasky sort of blown back a little bit from the recoil of the shotgun. I'm having a lot of fun with this series, and you guys can get involved too. We are doing a competition on our Discord to celebrate 1K members. You have to create a diorama. It can be any kind of base plates. It can be a mix and match of different pieces attached 
together. It then has to be a 1v1 battle. You can use any figures. You can use your own custom painted or molded figures. You can do whatever you want. And you're allowed to add civilians. You're allowed to add terrain pieces, broken vehicles, whatever you need to make what you imagined. More details on exactly how you can submit these will be going live in 24 hours on our Discord. So join the Mega Constructs Domain Discord. Make sure you're there, ready for the announcement in 24 hours. We'll give you exact details on how to submit. But in the meantime, get your bricks going, get building, and good luck with your dioramas. And I cannot wait to see the creativity that you guys come up with. This was another video with The Domain, episode three of our Versus series. I'll see you for episode four. Make sure to check out all of the coverage of all the new set leaks we've been going through recently. Have a great day out there. The Domain is signing off. Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain versus episode 4 and today I've got a real treat for you guys. I can't even believe what I'm looking at. This started as a little bit of a dream. Carter versus an elite warlord. Then I suspended them a little bit and just went mad from there. And this is celebrating our new versus diorama competition. We're on our discord to celebrate a thousand members. You can create a versus diorama and the main prize is a pelican inbound. So you definitely won't want to miss out on that. Link in the description and the comment of this video for our Discord and more details about that at the end of the video. So let's check out this diorama. Carter versus, I guess, a banished platoon. And I know the first thing you're going to say, this is not technically 1v1. It is in some ways. It's Carter versus the Elite Warlord. I wanted everything else to be more like background, although some of these elites are clearly still alive. So I'm cheating a little bit, but you know what? I make the rules around here. So we have a load of rules for our competition, but they're only guidelines. The real number one rule is to just have fun. So here we have Carter. I guess this is non-canonical. These are kind of Halo Reach figures. I really wanted to use a skirmisher, but I've not got that skirmisher pack yet. So I put a jackal there and then a load of grunts. Yes, a load of these are Halo Infinite figures, but this definitely takes place on Reach, in my opinion. So what's happening here? We've got this machine gun. It's a very important asset because a load of Covenant troops are about to land and Carter's been taking out a load of the platoon. So they needed to stop this turret. More and more enemies converged on this location, but Carter just wasn't having any of it, and he's taken them down one by one. Originally, it was some grunt scouts with one elite, and then when they got taken out, a load more elites came in, and it all just went downhill from there for the for the Covenant, at least. Like, they are not having a good day. You don't want to pick a fight with Carter, of all people. So I started really simply with one base plate, and then layered a load more on. I like to make sure that there are loads of different 3D elements. So a lot of my pieces are at different elevations. I've rounded it all off a lot as well. And I like to start with a light green grass and then have some more dirty grass leading into some more sort of solid soil. I want it all to be different colors. Then some sandbags sort of lock it together. It's all focused around this turret. And this turret is uh, actually from one of the fire team sets. And it has these really nice legs that I made sure all touch the ground in a really natural way. So first of all, I wanted to suspend these two figures. And I suspended the Carter with a very interesting little mechanism there. So I could make sure that I could suspend him at any angle I chose. Then the Elite Warlord is suspended from a sandbag. I thought that was a really easy way to do it. And then everything sort of kept on going from there. I just kept on suspending more and more things. Yeah, I am just really happy with this series and this diorama in particular. This is definitely my favorite one so far. But this Versus series has just been such a blast in general. Once I had the first two figures, I just kind of went nuts. This Elite is suspended right out of Carter's back. These rods are actually from Halo Heroes. They come in at a really nice 90 degree angle. He's jolting straight out and being assault rifled. I love this Halo Reach assault rifle with muzzle flare. And you will also notice there's kind of two different types of muzzle flare on this diorama. What I like about Mega Constructs is each muzzle flare comes in two pieces. So both together I like to use for things like DMRs, but then one on its own for more like impact weapons like shotguns. And then the small one for 
for burst weapons like SMGs and assault rifles. The next elite is suspended at a 90 degree angle coming out of this back. Again, it's a Halo Heroes rod, so you have two sticks coming out. This one coming out at an angle here. I love how much I can suspend these. And I've also used some dead bodies here to sort of cover up all of these pieces so it's not so obvious. The dead bodies, I also like the grunts sort of all scrambling towards the turret. I think that's a really nice touch. There's definitely all the grunts' weapons lying around. And this Billy is getting a face full of whatever's in this barrel. Halo Reach weapons as well. We've got a plasma repeater and a concussion rifle. Just excellent. Just absolutely excellent. This, this, uh, I've, I've always wanted to put Carter into like a really intimate diorama. He's my favorite Halo hero. I actually just got him recently. I also decided to give the Elite Warlord the newer energy sword just to match the energy sword that Elite has as well. So this is fantastic. Right up my alley. This is definitely my most chaotic 1v1 diorama yet, but I just won't be getting any more serious from here on out. Like, I'll just keep on making them more and more epic. I love the explosions of color in this one. I love all the different levels. Like, diorama should never just be on one flat terrain. They should all be at different vantage points. So, as you can see, I've changed the camera three times already, and every time there's something more and more interesting to look at. This jackal also, as it may seem weird, is helping Carter to stand up as well. Like, everything is sort of locked together in a way that just helps balance it all out. I'm a huge fan of this one, guys. A huge fan. And you should definitely let me know if Noble Team is something I should be focusing on with upcoming dioramas. Halo Reach is just all about last man standing, you know? And Carter is definitely going to be the last one standing here. This is another one of my versus dioramas, guys. And we're just getting started. I want to be pumping these out as much as possible. And they're all to celebrate our new 1K diorama competition that's happening on our Discord right now. And the grand prize is a sealed Pelican inbound from 2020 Halo Infinite. So if you would like to win a Pelican inbound, you gotta head over to our Discord right now and submit your own 1v1 diorama. The maximum base plate size is 30 by 30, but we're really keeping the rules very relaxed. Have 1v1, but loads of casualties, destroyed vehicles if you want, molded and sculpted terrain, you can paint your figures, you can add cotton buds and special effects and whatever you want to make your picture pop and get the attention of our judges to send you a Pelican inbound. This has been another video with The Domain, guys. Please do let me know what you want to see next. I'll take any requests. I'd love to do more Noble Team, more iconic heroes. Even if it doesn't make canonical sense, I'll be doing some really weird Spartan verses in the future. Stay awesome out there. Stay safe. The Domain is signing off. Lieutenant. Commander, sir. I'm Carter, Noble Team's leader. That's Cat, Noble Two, Neil and George, Four and Five. You're riding with me, Noble Six. Hello once again, YouTube, and welcome back to The Domain. Today, I've got something truly special in front of me, and something that I didn't expect to turn out like this at all. So welcome everybody to episode 5 of the Domain Versus, my very exciting like 1v1 diorama series, but it's hard to call this a versus episode. I'm going to because I, I love the name, I want to keep the series up, but this is definitely not 1v1 at all. I just went crazy with this in the end, and I'll tell you why. This was going to be a simple Master Chief versus Juggernaut standoff with Sergeant Johnson as a casualty in the background, but then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna build this anyway why don't I do a live stream? So I fired up my camera, I just did a very, very basic iPhone live stream, and you guys helped me build it. And you guys had a lot of great ideas and wanted me to just keep on going. So what started as a simple idea very quickly turned into this complex thing that you see in front of you. So this diorama is based on the last mission of Halo 3. The iconic sort of last stand against the flood. You're racing through the snowy biome to try and activate the ring. And it's just such a wonderful ending to the trilogy, such a climactic ending and so epic that I wanted to bring it to life today. So the Chief and the Arbiter to crash land their pelican and they're fighting up that sort of long column like stairwell it's it's like floor by floor you've got to work up to the control room and i wanted to do the ground floor so we've got all this snow and this is sort of leveled up and mounded in big chunks i go into full detail about how i make it i mean you can watch me make it piece by piece in the live stream so i'd recommend you watching that we'll start off you know we'll go figure by figure why not so first of all we've got that halo hero series 5 master chief just 
such an iconic figure, absolutely beautiful. He comes with this flamethrower, which is brought to life in the most epic way, and he's accompanied by his Series 5 Johnson counterpart. That is Johnson from Series 5 with his Spartan laser, but I gave him an extra really cool Magnum. And then the other figures are even more interesting. First, we've got this Flood here. Now, you can tell that this is a Flood that is... It's a bit of an abomination of many different figures. First of all, I took the Halo 3 Marine body. You know, it had to be Halo 3 here. I gave it the old school Halo Mega Blocks Flood head. And it's the perfect color, maybe from Series 5 blind bags. I'm not sure. So that is a brought to life Halo 3 Flood Marine. And then we've got one more flood, which is even more crazy, this Brute. Now, this Brute is brought to life from the Halo 3 New Dawn blind bag Brute. And then again, the Halo 4 blind bag flood. And then we've got this top bit, which I'm guessing most of you will recognize. It's the flood piece that comes with Halo Heroes Captain Keys. So I thought that was a really interesting addition to it. It's really fun. And like, I haven't tried popping and swapping that onto many other things. I know it needs more of a backwash to it, but I think this is such a cool little... just. A quick flood custom and you can still see that monkey head poking out on the top as well now halo hero series 5 arbiter still eludes me if you have it hit me up but this is the one from the warthog run with the master chief this arbiter is still awesome nice gold plating and then i gave him all of the halo 2 weapons that the arbiter has from the master chief versus arbiter battle pack so i thought they were all great to give him especially that crackling blue energy sword yeah that's all the figures apart from the huge flood and then we've got these two little floods on the side as well. Two different colors, one from the Kinsano Cyclops and one from Clash on the Ring blind bags. So where to even begin with this diorama? Because there are so many levels to it. And that's what I really like to do with these dioramas or any. I like to create very varied levels. So anytime you look at a different camera angle, there is always something new to see. Like we haven't even talked about Guilty Spark hanging out there yet. So there is so much going on. And I know there's some inconsistencies like yes, you couldn't drive a mongoose this part of the mission. Though I guess you could after Johnson dies, so that's one thing. But yeah, I just, I absolutely love it. I love representations of any in-game cutscenes or levels, so I'm gonna be doing a lot more like this in the future. I'd love to hear your suggestions. So the snow biome, I layered really slowly, just carefully, using all the pieces to my advantage, because I don't have that many pieces in Hong Kong. That's the funny thing. Like, this was done pretty much with, like, bare necessities. Like, this was pretty much made with all the pieces I had, so I'm really impressed with, like, how much I could spin everything out. That structure itself is a little bit fragile, but I actually secured it in a really nice way, and I think it's also great when I can use studs, so the figures aren't just held on by blue tack. It's much nicer if they can be fastened on properly using blocks. So the Arbiter is already making good progress up the tower, but the Chief had to go back for Johnson, who fell against this mongoose as a flood tank form is about to take him out, but luckily, the Chief's coming in with a flamethrower, you know? I wouldn't be too worried if I was... Well, maybe I would be. He's <laughs> that flood tank is pretty much in his face. But the Master Chief as well, I love that flamethrower. It adds so much of a, like, higher dimension to a diorama when you can have that flame, like, ripping out of the weapon. It's just so cool. And the Master Chief, he was originally looking at the flood tank form, but his attention has now been brought to this Marine. And you can see one hand has already moved away from the flamethrower as he's gonna go for his assault rifle. So it's an ever-changing environment, ever-changing situation. Yeah, we're gonna take it apart a little bit so I can show you the inner workings of this diorama and put it all back together again. All right, so here we are, the bare bones. First of all, this guilty spark, I always like to try and find some easy place to insert a rod. In this case, it was the top of the mongoose. And yeah, the mongoose is also a great feature. What I wanted was, because this is all snow, I wanted the mongoose to have screeched to the side, slammed into a rock, and then grounded itself. And I wanted all these mounds of snow to sort of represent kicked up snow. They've sort of all been piled at different levels. And that also invites this body to sort of just easily slot in there. And then I wanted just a wheel, I tacked that to the side. And I also wanted to make sure it was mostly snow and mostly sort of ground and dirt. I layered two dirt base plates of different colors on the top of the green. This was originally like a big green base plate, but that doesn't matter. Like it could be freshly fallen snow, especially with the biome changing all the time from the halo array being like constructed. Could have been new fallen snow on top of grass. So that's what I went with. And I wanted the mongoose to have sort of kicked up even the grass level and left some bare dirt under 
to neat. Now, this is what I'm most impressed with in the diorama. Like, this seems pretty simple, but it's actually quite complex, in my opinion. First of all, I've got this little stud here. Now, I wanted the perfect way to insert this, and you can see that inserts in there and literally just levitates it in a very forerunner-looking display. Like, it even looks like it's got some forerunner sort of levitation going on there. And then I locked it all off at the bottom, smoothed it off with all these tiles and a grid, like sort of some ventilation. And then these sort of tiles run all around because let's not forget, this is a, you know, this is an alien made structure. It's not organic. So I'm having all of these different silver pieces running pretty much everywhere. I really enjoy this. This is a sort of rod and means I can position him anywhere. So if I clip this on the bottom, have it angled all the way around. Mainly I wanted him being able to just crawl at a full angle. Like that's what the flood do. They can crawl anywhere. So that's what I got going on. That's the base plate. If you want to learn more, watch the full live stream. It's only an hour long and I go into full detail about all of the inner workings of this. I then had black smoothed off pieces, wanted to keep it flat, adds another level of grating. And then later on I added these so I could suspend my figures with ease. The first one I was worried about was Johnson because I wanted him slumped up against that mongoose. Then I was concerned with who Johnson was shooting at, this flood tank. Next, who's protecting Johnson? Who's the chief fighting? This random flood infection form, just fleshing out the diorama as much as possible. And then why not? We'll have someone fighting that brute. It's gotta be the Arbiter. Guilty Spark seems super appropriate. I mean, during these levels, he's basically floating around everywhere. A couple more flood and we are done. That's our diorama, guys. Could not be happier with it. Honestly, like, this is so cool. Friends, this is episode five of our Domain Versus series. Mega Constructs Versus is gonna be my main staple of my channel. I love this so much. And we're just getting started, believe me. So if you're hungry for more, you can check out the links in the description below for episode one to four. Sergeant Forge against the Arbiter. We've got the Master Chief against a Halo Heroes Brute Chieftain. Lasky versus a Promethean Knight. And to top it off, Carter from noble team against a whole platoon of banished. So you won't want to miss those out. And if you want to get involved yourself, we are doing a diorama competition on our discord right now. It's to celebrate a thousand members though. Since announcing this competition, we're already on 1300 members. So that's crazy. And you can win a sealed Pelican inbound guys, sealed Pelican inbound just for taking part, create a one V one diorama. And do remember that this one I'm showing you right now is not a one V one diorama. I just got excited and I want to show you good content content on YouTube. But if you want to enter our 1v1 diorama competition, all the full rules are on our Discord. Good luck to all that enter. There's about two weeks left until entries are closed, and you better believe I'm going to have a lot more diorama videos out before then. This was another video with The Domain. Please do let me know what diorama you want to see next. I'm taking suggestions all the time. I want to build what you want. Thanks so much for the support on the channel. We're about to hit 31k, which is super exciting. Stay awesome out there. Stay safe. Have a great day. And the diorama is signed. Signing off. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the new stream. This is one that I have been I have been wanting to do for so long, and you know, this more than anything feels like I'm going back to the domain roots. And I'm not talking the SS Motion roots, I'm talking the domain, okay? When I relaunched my channel last year, my first big video, or my first few big videos, were ODST dioramas. They were just so epic, I had so much fun making them. This is back to my roots. We've got an ODST diorama this morning. I cannot tell you how excited I am about that sentence. So this is gonna be a diorama like no other. I've got all of my community here to build it with me. This is not just gonna be a pre-recorded thing. We're gonna build it together. And I want all of your input, any suggestions, any figures you want, any weapons. And we're gonna make an epic diorama. And this is the start. This beautiful banking tower 
from, funnily enough, the original Spider-Man sets. We've got our figures, literally just like a hundred or so figures. Then we've got a bag full of like all the Halo 3 related figures. And we got base plates, we got an extra camera. And we're gonna just tack this to the far end of this base plate. The Covenant have just completely overwhelmed uh, New Mombasa. You know, we're, we're towards the end of the campaign. We've just got intel that some top brute leaders are all kept inside this bank. It's like their reconnaissance base. It's where all their intel's going into. The ODSTs and the rest of the UNSC are going to storm in as fast as they can and try and overwhelm this bank from the outside. These are gonna be some kind of brute generators. And these nice structures outside the building. These are just perfect for any kind of walls, any kind of big structures. We're gonna have these on either side of the bank. The UNSC already had these in place. They're part of the structure, especially these purple ones. They're perfect for any kind of covenant task force. So there's a difference between these UNSC pillars and the covenants. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, they ain't playing no games, the Covenant. They have fortified that well. One more barricade here. We've got these base plates here next. Now, I want this green to sort of run off into like the side. Like this is sort of a, a part. Got my big boy piece box. And then I just want to get any and all flat pieces. I'll definitely just accept that for now. What about a destroyed warthog in the front with dead Marines and NMPD? Good idea. Should definitely have a destroyed warthog. And then we've also got one more warthog here and a mongoose. I want them part of the frontal assault. Let's have this downed warthog here and they'll have put a little uh, barricade on the side of it. Our downed warthog that the brutes are gonna be trying to pillage through, find whatever they can use. Oh lads, it's always good when there's a cockroach inside your peace box. Get out of here. Also shout out to 150 strong on the live stream. Put an Oni helmet in the wall as an Easter egg. Hey, that's so good. That's such a good idea. Just stick that in the window. Yes. Oni helmet as an Easter egg. That's so sick. We gotta set the scene before we start dumping figures on here. We really do. I wanna build up the base first, running along the side. Got these pieces here, locking off the sides really nicely. There we are. A little bit of tack on this brick. The warthog just blasting straight through that wall. The mongoose following the warthog along. They're just pushing as quickly and as hard as they can into this base. When something is pretty much just blasted, it's com it's just rubble. You can get creative. You can just pop things in any direction. Blue tack is your best friend, guys. Absolutely beautiful, fellas. The downed warthog, then the warthog charging through the wall, the mongoose, and then this destroyed wall here. Let's talk some figures, everybody. A ridiculous amount for this diorama. And there, we've got our figures. Any figures that you request, I can also add. This bag here, this is a bag full of Halo 3 figures. All a New Dawn figures. This is an old one, the Half AC Brute Stalker. Really wanted to include that. Night Stalker Brutes. That four pack is one of my favorites. A load of Brute Miners, Brute Captains, including the 10th anniversary. All of these ODSTs. Da, 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 da. Drop pod ODSTs, book and Romeo Halo Heroes, PAX blind bags. You could get these at PAX Comic Cons. They're amazing. Avery. No diorama is complete without Avery. He's the mascot of the SS Motion and the Domain. This is my holy piece box. All of my really prized collectibles. A brute captain and Halo 3 grunt. Two drones, red and green. Orange drone or yellow, I guess. Another yellow drone. Drone there. Seven NMPD officers. We've got a Halo 3 grunt. This is from the Hornet Halo 2 Marines. Because this is kind of taking place within Halo 2. This blind bag is going to take place in the diorama. This figure is going to be in the diorama. If you comment down below saying diorama hype, I'll pick a winner. You cannot have a diorama without Billy the Grunt. Shooting down. I don't know how we got up there. Let's start really loading this thing up with figures. We'll start at the bank and we'll push out. That uh, seems to be the thing that would make Makes sense. We'll have the brute captain, this purple one. He's the 10th anniversary of Mega Blocks. So it makes sense that he's, you know, standing proud on top of this. He's shooting at the warthog that is veering towards him. I don't think he'll survive this encounter, but he's gonna give it his he's gonna give it his dang best shot. A couple of brute captains looking good. And the brute captain on the watchtower. So this brute captain charging out of the gate. 
And this brute captain, he's got a gravity hammer and a plasma rifle in hand. He's like one of the leaders, definitely. And he's commanding everyone to like move out of the base. So we'll have him to the side. Get to it, boys. You've got some humans to kill. Get out there. By order of the captain, the brutes are running out of the gate. They're going to meet some heavy UNSC resistance here. We'll also attach some grunts down. So let's start to get some UNSC in here. So we want Romeo for sure. We'll have Romeo shooting the captain as requested. God, I'm going to want to play some Halo 3 ODST after this, that's for sure. That Halo 3 Marine's being gravity hammered. We'll throw his assault rifle to the side. This is the genius of this set, having these studs. We'll have this grunt falling straight out of the the window. They're just having a little snooze. They haven't even noticed that the battle's going on. <laughs> Simon, put a suicide grunt over an ODST, like a brute through it. Ah! You can't make this stuff up, ladies and gentlemen. This is what makes the Halo community truly special. Two brutes on the guard tower, one throwing Charles the grunt down. <laughs> We've got four drones fixed up. Let's start attaching them everywhere. So we'll obviously have a load of these drones on the top of the bank. Okay, they're chilling up there. The streets of New Mombasa. We've got our ODST trying to knife this drone. We've got a book here. So this grunt's been sleeping nicely on the floor and he's moving forward. He's gonna be pushing forward fast. He's got Romeo next to him and he's got only operative dare will be uh, by his side as well. I've got a funny bag over here, let me show you. This is my bag of heads for all of my important characters. The Marines from the Warthog, they will have just been thrown into that corner, just piled up. They're not necessary while the Warthog's been pillaged. And yeah, let's get some more of Alpha 9 going. One of my favorite pieces of my original ODST diorama was that the Rookie was just a badass. He was just charging a hunter. So I think I'm gonna do a similar thing. Rookie facing that hunter straight on. As I always like to do with my hunters, when they're charging forward, they have a Marine slung over their shield, completely just charged straight through him. Like they haven't even thought of him being there. It's a little bit tricky. But you can do it. Insert it into the back of the Marine so you can really have him flung through the air. This brute has been guarding the Warthog and he's charging straight for this ODST. Oh, that's gotta hurt, my friend. Have a brute kicking a Marine. That's a good idea. What do we want to add next? We're also gonna have this uh, dead elite. You know, he symbolizes the end of the Elite's reign over the Brutes, or over the Covenant, ran over by the tire of this Warthog. Let's get our NMPD in here, boys. Driving the Warthog and driving the Mongoose. Again, this Warthog is blasting through right now. The NMPD are definitely not going in quietly. They're going straight for that tower. First of all, we've got Bam Bam Productions. He wants an NMPD officer, giving one of the Coveys a mean uppercut. Five NMPD troops. I absolutely love these guys. Some of them I've kitted out like crazy. This officer in particular, he's got a target locator that I painted, and then he's also got a uh, riot shield. So he's gonna be pushing through with his riot shield, sort of breaking the defenses, holding on for dear life on the back of the mongoose. He's gonna try and get a few shots off on that hunter before it becomes too much of a problem. And we've got two more NMPD Marines. Let's, let's actually say this guy is now protecting his fallen comrade off to the side. Hey Simon, do you think you could add a Marine hiding in the corner? So we've got these Halo 2 Marines here. Who's this bad boy? It's Sergeant Avery Johnson. He actually had the same shotgun on my new Mombasa bridge diorama way back in the day. You know, that's full circle for you boys. Johnson coming in with his nice shotgun, ordering his troops to engage, and he's gonna be trying to blow that drone out of the sky, picking up that rocket launcher from a dead corpse over there. An ODST with dual wield magnums. Brute Miner with a brute shot. We've also got this ODST custom here. This is a beautiful custom by Critically Late Insta, and that needs pride of place. And he's gonna be pushing through to fire upon this grunt who has just found the rocket launcher. He's gonna stop that grunt in its tracks. Ladies and gentlemen, my new Mombasa diorama. In all its glory, look at this thing. Ah, it's so good. Like a Halo diorama to begin with, but then also a Halo 3 ODST diorama. I haven't made one in almost a year. So it just feels so good to make an ODST diorama again, ladies and gentlemen. This is my Halo 3 ODST 
bank siege diorama. So this bank has been the central hub of all Covenant activity in New Mombasa since they arrived about 24 hours ago and it has been well fortified with all this purple, this Covenant barricades around and a watchtower. The grunts, they've, uh, they've been trying to do their best to shoot but one of them's falling straight out of the bank. The drones are coming down, and the Marines and the ODSTs, the New Mombasa police, after receiving intel that this is the spot, they provided an all-out assault. And I think they're about to be victorious. There are just so many of them pushing in now. So we've got this downed wreckage of a warthog from last time. The submarines piled up dead in the background. Some grunts sleeping. They've just been woken up. One of them's found a rocket, but it's about to be taken out by this ODST. This was the first assault with some dead marines and ODSTs littered around, but the second assault is much stronger. We've got this warthog charging in with a mongoose. We've got this hunter who's about to go face to face with the rookie, but he is also meeting resistance with this police officer. With this shield, he's trying to protect his downed brother over here. Then all the ODSTs, Marines, Sergeant Johnson with a nice shotgun, pushing in here this flame ODST, taking out this brute. This ODST grabbing onto this drone in the air, trying to knife it. A brute kicking an ODST in the face and a NMPD officer uppercutting a brute stalker. This brute miner is throwing Charles the Grunt through the air. We've got so much going on. This warthog is smashing this barricade. It is a beautiful diorama. And I'm so happy you guys were here to build it with me. You were as involved in this as I was. I loved all the suggestions. I was able to incorporate so many of them. And the end result, I think we can agree, is quite beautiful quite beautiful. Let me know in the comments before we go today what is your favorite part of this diorama and honestly guys I'm just so pleased with this diorama. I love everything about it. I love the banking building. It was just such a perfect scene for this leading into those covenant barricades. They are excellent. I love this downed warthog with the brute miner on top. This drone being uh, knifed by the ODST. I love that Alpha 9 is assaulting up against this Hunter. Just, I'm so happy with it, guys. I could not be happier with this diorama, and this just spurs me on so much better to produce my next one. I've got a very special Amazon parcel arriving in just a few days' time. In that are some brand new beach base plates, and with those base plates, I'm going to be creating a Halo Combat Evolved Assault on the Control Room diorama that's going to be titled My Largest Halo Combat Evolved Diorama Ever. It's just going to be so good. It's going to be so good. I'm so excited about it. Thank you so much, guys. This has been an awesome diorama. I'm going to go make some breakfast. You stay awesome. You stay safe out there. Thanks so much for your support. I'll see you next time. The Domain is signing off.
What happened? Where is Cortana? The rogue AI known as Cortana is gone. She's been deleted. How? By you? Of course not. Did you hit your head or something? Don't you remember? My instructions were to enter this installation, imitate Cortana, and lock her down for retrieval. Yours were to take her back to the Infinity for deletion. So if it wasn't you... Okay then. There's something else. On successful deployment, my deletion routine was supposed to complete. Still here. <laughs> Good. Good? Something stopped your deletion. We need to find out why. But this wasn't the mission. The missions changed. They always do. Are you sure? A model of palsy lets them. That's not going to happen. It won't be me. You know that, right? It's not over. Not yet. Don't make a girl a promise you can't keep. Once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. I'm bringing you this new diorama video and boy howdy, like I'm just so excited to share this with you guys. First of all, you know, here at The Domain, dioramas are our number one. They're our most viewed videos, they're the ones I enjoy making the most. But really, I've been struggling recently because I just don't have the pieces to make them in Hong Kong. That's where our legendary friend Bam Bam Production comes in. He sent me a ton of diorama set pieces, scenery, terrain, foliage, all that kind of stuff. And this is the first diorama I've made with all those new pieces. So I want to talk this through bit by bit, break it down, my thought process behind it, the lore and the story. This is part three, I guess. Part one is a live stream this morning where I unpackaged Fireteam Osiris. Then part two was where I built this live. If you want to join in on those dioramas in the future, make sure to turn the bell on on this channel and you'll know when I go live next. Yeah, we just, as the community, built this together, this gorgeous display of Fireteam Osiris against the Mithril Diedag, which I've come up with some cool lore behind him as well. Let's break this down bit by bit. So this diorama takes place just before Halo 5, a little bit after Halo 4. Fireteam Osiris have been a team for quite a while now. They work really well together, so the UNSC trusted them on this new assignment. So basically, a call came in from the outer colonies. Very strange, scrambled frequency. The UNSC trying to call for emergency assistance, reinforcements from the Infinity. Nobody could really make out what it was. They just said some kind of gigantic robot. Now after Halo 4, there haven't been many Promethean sightings for a while, so the UNSC is very concerned by this. They send Fireteam Osiris in with some more UNSC troops to try and assess the situation, and they would have never expected to come across the Mithril Didact. This is a reincarnation of the Didact that died at the end of Halo 4 slash the comics. He came back in the comics for a while, but his death was really in Halo 4 for most fans. But he's back right now as the Mithril reincarnation. This melted hot silver custom that was made by Miniature Hobbyist alongside this Watcher and the Crawler. They're some of my favorite figures and I've been wanting to use them in a diorama for a long time. Once I finally got hold of Fireteam Osiris, it seemed like like the perfect opportunity. A lot of the figures that you'll see on this diorama are downed UNSC forces. They were the ones that were holding this base to begin with. You can see the start of the UNSC base on this barbed wire. I didn't go into much detail about that. That's somewhere off camera. But the UNSC forces, they detected
did some motion in this jungle canopy, and when they arrived, they met a swift end from the Didact. You'll see some of the UNSC reinforcements coming in now, one of them being choked by the Didact, one stuck in barbed wire, one being helped by Spartan Buck, and one being assisted by some medics that have come in with Fireteam Osiris. Osiris obviously bringing medics in because they know there was a distress signal that went out, there's definitely going to be some UNSC casualties, and yeah, they definitely weren't wrong about that. The first thing I did when building this diorama was assess my base plates. I spent a good hour before the live stream laying them out, choosing the correct order that I was really happy with, and then layering a load of pieces on top, and then slowly building the jungle canopy. The trees were one of the last things to add, then the flowers to sort of just add some vibrance and some extra garnishes to the diorama. Garnish is a funny word to use in that situation, but kind of works. And then the figures were the very, very last thing I added once the diorama was 100% complete. I knew in my head what I wanted, uh, sort of a nod to Halo 4, a lot of those jungle missions. The first footage of Halo 4 we ever saw was in the jungle, so this seemed appropriate. I knew that the figures would kind of just complement the scenery that I had going on around. The scenery would more tell the story, and the figures would be added afterwards. Not as an afterthought, and definitely there was some scenery that I changed around once I'd added the figures, but I wanted the main jungle to be the centerpiece here. And I didn't want too much fighting, you know, a lot of my dioramas are nothing but gunfire. I wanted this to be more of like a first contact scenario. So there isn't much gunfire going on apart from Tanaka's sniper rifle. Locke is just about to open fire on the Didact. Veil is coming in with her SMG as well, but really there isn't much fire going on here. It's more just everybody scaling out the situation and they're about to go into a full-on firefight. I also wanted very distinct colors in this diorama. You'll see the light greens representing fields and meadows on the outskirts of the jungle. The river running in has a dark green base play where all of the moss will have swollen from the water. The grass gets much darker as we enter the jungle and it's dark lush greens with some rocky terrain. I've made sure to elevate parts of that rocky terrain a lot more with extra boulders and rocks. Yeah, really the colors are one of the main focal points of this diorama. Just wanted a full vibrant set of flowers, grass, jungle, like this is definitely a lush scene. I definitely wanted the main attention of this diorama to be on the didact and we thought of a really cool way of doing that. He's actually suspended through the air, just levitating, kind of a little Mary Poppins-esque. He's strangling this marine who is also suspended in the air. These rods are just perfect for doing that. And these flowers also allow you to suspend very secretly. And yeah, this didact just looks fantastic. I moved the trees up a lot. I increased their height to make sure nothing contrasted with him. So he's like the forceful part of this scene. Yeah, he's floating away from all these marines that he's murdered quite recently. He's commanding this crawler and the Watcher, who have both separated into different firefights. The Marines, I just love these Halo 4 Marines so much. I think they have so much personality compared to most Marines. We've got this one stuck in the barbed wire fence, probably still alive. There's a ton of different Marines here. I like the one at the back where the Spartan soldier is kicking him while he's down with a pulse grenade primed. I like this Marine here being helped up by the medic and another medic covering his back. I gave this assault rifle a bayonet. Think that they are awesome, but this Spartan soldier is about to engage with them, give them a whole new set of problems. This Marine's attention is definitely on the crawler, but this is running away from them. It's heading straight for this Spartan, or maybe for its kill. It might have taken this Marine out earlier and it's coming back after being spooked away by the Spartans. It's gonna try and come back in for a little feast. I don't know if these things actually eat people. I don't know if they need to eat at all, considering they're robots. Who knows? Let me know if you, uh, if you know the lore behind the crawlers there. Then I thought I'd definitely give Buck the more human role here. Like he's definitely the most humanized of the Spartans in Fireteam Osiris. So he would be the one looking after this Marine. Spartan Tanaka has the Arrow of Time sniper rifle. She's gonna be taking a shot straight at the Didact. So is Vale. She was actually about to shoot at the Didact, but the Watcher came out of nowhere. She has to start shooting at that. The other gunfire is coming from Locke. And this is one of my favorite parts of the diorama. This took a long time to figure out. Really difficult to suspect 
suspend lock from this canopy. We found a trick in the end where we attached the lawgiver shotgun, sort of clipped that into one of the branch holsters and then had this one coming out of the side. I definitely wanted some more canopy to try and hide him, cover him up. And I think it just worked out so perfectly in the end. He is the assassin, the only operative after all. So he would be the one on top of the trees trying to sneak up on the didact, firing down on the mithril didact there. Fantastic. All of this new foliage is just so wonderful. We have flowers everywhere, just blooming out of all the corners that I could possibly squeeze them into. We have a load of nice marine life, including this ocean creature here, this coral. And then we've also got a little crab, starfish, and shell all down the river. Some more sort of river oceanic kind of foliage there, and then more and more flowers. This opens up into sort of like a green space. This is not, there's not much going on here on purpose. I want this to just be like an open meadow. But definitely tons of flowers. A load of these like sticking up sort of needle things that I guess are the early on shoots of these bamboos. They're just growing for the first time now. And there is absolutely loads of them. I mean, the more you look at this diorama, the more you realize it's packed full of layers, packed full of life and color. Like this is definitely my most expressive diorama I've made. Cause like usually my dioramas are massive battles, which I do love. But this one just has so much green, so much color. And really just thanks to all of these new terrain pieces. This isn't even a third of what I got sent. So I'm really excited to see what boundaries I can push in the future to like make even more expressive dioramas. That's all for today, folks. This is my brand new Halo 5 diorama. Thanks so much to everyone who tuned into the live stream and helped build it. It was such a blast hanging out with you guys as always. And yeah, let me know what kind of diorama you would like to see next. The sky is the limit. Now I have all of these base plates, all of these extra scenery pieces. Like I wanna go nuts with dioramas leading into summer. There are just so many awesome things to make. So you stay awesome, you stay safe out there, guys. And the Mithril Didact is signing off. Dun 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 dun.